In the uh, nine pass championship games, the Giants have won three and lost six. Baltimore is sparked by the remarkably fine quarterbacking and passing of the Cinderella kid of pro football, Johnny Unitas, who came off a sandlot near Pittsburgh to make the grade with Baltimore. A University of Louisville alumnus, Unitas cost the Colts only a telephone call to sign, and this year he's been the mainspring of their versatile attack, which has brought the Colts their first conference title. He's thrown at least one touchdown pass in his last 25 consecutive games. That's a National Football League record. With Uniters are such fine performers as speedster L.G. Dupre, other speedsters in Lenny Lyles, Lenny Moore, and Johnny Call, flanking the power men of the Colts attack, Alan Amici and uh, Billy Pricer. Up front are a pair of splendid pass catchers in Raven Berry and Jim Mutchler at ends with an interior line that's big, mobile, and tough. Parker and Priest at tackles, Spinney and Tendusky at guards, and Buzz Nutter at center. The defensive platoon of the Colts is anchored by a huge, tough four-man wall of Gino Marchetti, Art Donovan, Gene Lipscomb, and Don Joyce. They average 262 pounds. And it's a defensive unit that has played an impressive role in Baltimore's march to the Western title this season. Their secondary, for instance, has grabbed off some 35 enemy passes this season. That's an average of three interceptions a game. The Giants of New York have an equally impressive defensive unit. So rugged have these New York Warriors been, particularly these past two weeks, that they've been accorded ovations when the defensive platoon left the field, particularly last Sunday when they limited the Cleveland Browns to a 64-yard total gain and blanked the Browns 10 to nothing. And that, as anyone in the National Football League will tell you, is no small trick. Offensively, the Giants move a 38-year-old quarterback, Charlie Connolly, the most venerable of the National Football League pilots in command. He has 88 completions and 184 attempts for 1,199 yards and 10 touchdowns. And Connolly has a veteran and a fine uh, first-year backfield, too. A pair of back lines to work with in the uh, veteran backfield. He has Frank Gifford and all-league choice. Alex Webster, a power runner. The hard-charging belt triplet at fullback, and they've got a splendid line in front of them. So, with all the spirit, drive, and enthusiasm of the men who love to play this game and who play to win, we'll see the finest teams of the National Football League today. And as added incentive, they'll be fighting for the winner's end of the player's pool. And that's extra cash for everybody at holiday time. Now, one unusual feature prevails today. The application of the National Football League sudden death rule will be made. In the event of the regulation, the regulation game ends in a tie score. Under the terms of the sudden death regulations, the toss of a coin with the choice made by the visiting team captain decides which team will kick off or receive to start the extra period or periods. Then the teams continue to play until one of the other scores, field goal, safety, or touchdown, whereupon that team is declared the winner and the game ends. But sudden death has never been invoked in previous world title games. Whether or not it will today, we don't know. However, to tell you about it, and to bring you the starting lineups, here is my colleague on today's broadcast, a fine sports reporter, and Bill McColgan. Bill? Thank you very much, Joe. Good afternoon, football fans from Yankee Stadium. It's the Colts against the New York Giants for the National Football League Championship. In just a moment, we're going to have our national anthem, so we'll delay our running down the starting lineups on today's game. The referee this afternoon is Ron Gibbs of the College of St. Thomas, the umpire Lou Colasi of Penn State, the headlines from Charlie Berry of Lafayette, the back judge is Cleo Deal of Northwestern, the field judge is Charlie Sweeney of Notre Dame. Out on the field right now, the combined bands, the Baltimore Coast Cowboy Band, and Wayne High School Band of New Jersey. The crowd expected to reach 70,000 to witness this championship tilt here this afternoon. The New York Giants... Last were in the championship game two years ago in 1956 when they won up the Chicago Bears. Our national anthem.
National Anthem played by the combined bands of Wayne High School of New Jersey and the Baltimore Colts Cowboy Band. And now the starting lineup. And first for the Western Conference champions, the Baltimore Colts, coached by Wee Bubank. At left end, number 82, Ray Berry, 6'2", 190-pounder, 25 years old, in his fourth year in the National Football League, and he's from Southern Methodist. His home is in Paris, Texas. The left tackle, a former Ohio State All-American, Big Jim Parker, 6'3", 270 pounds, 24 years old, in his second year in the pro ranks. He's a native of Toledo, Ohio. His home is now in Baltimore, Maryland. The left guard, number 63, Art Spinney, who played his collegiate football at Boston College, 6'1", 230 pounds, 31 years old, his seventh year in the NFL. Bell. He's from Saugus, Massachusetts, but he too makes his home now in Baltimore, Maryland. The center, number 50, Madison Buzz Nutter, 6'4", 235 pounds, 27 years old, in his fifth year in the league. Played his college ball at Virginia Polytech, and his home is in Huntington, West Virginia. The right guard from Clarion State Teachers in Pennsylvania, number 68, Alex Sandusky, 6'3", 235 pounds, 26 years old, in his fifth year with the Baltimore Colts. His home is in Annapolis, Maryland. The right tackle is number 60, George Priest, 6'2", 245 pounds, 25 years old. In his fourth year, he's from Virginia Polytech, and his home is in Roanoke, Virginia. The right end, number 84, from Notre Dame, Jim Mutscheller, 6'1", 215 pounds, 28 years old. In his fifth year, and he lives in Baltimore. Moving out of the offensive backfield, number 19, Johnny Unitas, will be a quarterback. 6'1", 190 pounds, 25 years old. In his third year, he's from the University of Louisville. He makes his home in Baltimore. At left halfback, the speed boy from Baylor, L.G. Dupre, 5'11", 190 pounds, 26 years old. In his fourth year in the league, he wears number 45, and he's from Baltimore, Maryland. The right halfback, also living in Baltimore, number 24, the former Penn State star, Lenny Moore, and a threat to go the distance any time he gets his hands on the ball. Moore is 6'1", 190 pounds, 25 years old, in his third year in the National Football League. The fullback, a former All-American from the University of Wisconsin, 6'1", 220 pounds, Alan Amici, 25 years old, in his fourth year in the National Football League. Living out of the Eastern Conference champion, New York Giants, coached by Jim Lee Howell, the left end, number 44, Kyle Rode, who is 6 feet, 205 pounds, 30 years old, and his eighth year in the league. He's from Southern Methodist. His home is in San Antonio, Texas. The left tackle, number 79, Roosevelt Brown, who played his college ball at Morgan State. Big Rosie is 6'3", 245 pounds, 25 years old. In his sixth year with the Giants, he's from Charlottesville, Virginia. The left guard, number 68, Al Berry, 6'2", 230 pounder from Southern California. 27 years old in his third year, the first two of which were spent with the Green Bay Packers. His home is in Beverly Hills, California. At center, a former Northwestern star, number 55, Ray Wateka, 6'1", 225 pounds, 29 years old. In his sixth year, he's from East Chicago, Indiana. The right guard, a boy who played his college football under Red Blake at West Point, number 62, Bob Mishak, 6 feet, 240 pounds, 25 years old. He's in his first year in the National Football League. A year ago, he did go to the Cleveland Browns camp at Hiram College, but quit, and then uh, decided to come back to football this year and was signed by the New York Giants. His home is in nearby Union, New Jersey. The right tackle, a rookie who has done a tremendous job for the Giants in place of the injured Jack Stroud, number 72, Frank Yusso, who is 6'4", 260 pounds, 22 years old, in his first year he's from Minnesota, and his home is in International Falls, Minnesota, the home of another football great, Bronco Nagurski. At right end, number 85, Bob Schnelker, 6'4", 215 pounder, 28 years old, in his sixth year he played his college football at Bowling Green in Ohio, and his home is in Marion, Ohio. In the backfield, it's expected that Coach Jim Lee Howe will again follow his uh, system of starting Don Heinrich and then following up with the veteran Charlie Connerly. Heinrich wears number 11. He's 6 feet, 180 pounds, 27 years old, played at the University of Washington, and his home is in Bremerton, Washington. The left halfback, one of the most versatile men in the National Football League today or any other day, Frank Gifford, the ex-Southern California star, 6'1", 205 pounds, 28 years old, in his seventh year. He's from Bakersfield, California. He's a fine runner, a great pass receiver, and can also throw the football. At right halfback, number 29, Alex Webster, 6'3", 210 pounds, 27 years old, in his fourth year. Played college football at North Carolina State. His home is in New Brunswick, New Jersey. And the starting fullback, Mel Triplett, number 33, from Toledo, 6'1", 215 pounds, 26 years old, in his fourth year in the National Football League. We'll be set for the kickoff in just a moment. I'm Ralph Monacchetti, and here's how we play our Marlboro song.
got better makings than a Marlboro. More flavor, more filter, more cigarette. Look for the new Gold Crest on the pack and box. For better makings, make it Marlboro. You get a lot to like with a Marlboro. Filter, flavor, set top box. Just a couple of moments away. Let's check some of the boys who are expected to play a big part in this football game. A quarterback for the Baltimore Colts, Johnny Unitas, the most valuable player in the National Football League a year ago, so voted by the players of the league. He was drafted ninth by the Pittsburgh Steelers back in 1955. This year, he ain't ranked fifth in passing with an average of 7.63 yards per throw. He led the league in touchdown passes with 19, and he has passed for touchdowns in 25 consecutive games, a league record. The players are now being introduced individually. The Baltimore Colts being introduced first, and then the New York Giants will be introduced to this uh, huge crowd here at Yankee Stadium this afternoon. Also in the Baltimore backfield today, Lenny Moore, we mentioned briefly in uh, introducing the Baltimore Colts. He was eighth in the league in ground gaining, although he carried the ball just 82 times. He had the top average of 7.3 yards per try. Also, fourth in pass receiving and third in scoring. His big game came against the Chicago Bears when he scored four touchdowns. His uh, college coach, Penn State coach Rip Engel, called Lenny Moore the greatest player he ever coached. Alan Amici, the big fullback, led the league in ground gaining as a rookie back in 1955. He was a Heisman Trophy winner in 54 while playing for the University of Wisconsin. The Heisman Trophy, of course, goes to the outstanding and collegiate football player in the country, and Amici was second to Jimmy Brown in rushing this season. Gino Marchetti, an all-pro in the last three years. He has been in the Pro Bowl for the last five years and is regarded by most pro football experts as the best defensive end in the game. He participated in the Battle of the Bells during World War II when he was only 18 years old. Speaking of defensive ends, we have two of the finest out here on this field this afternoon in Marchetti of the Baltimore Colts and Andy Robustelli of the New York Giants. And it's going to be interesting to see what big Jim Parker, who is playing at left tackle, can do to keep Robustelli, the defensive right end for the New York Giants, out of the Baltimore backfield. The past two weeks against the Cleveland Browns, Robustelli played outstanding football. Ray Berry at left hand for Baltimore, tied with Pete Retzlaff of the Philadelphia Eagles for pass receiving honors with a total of 56 this year, and nine of them went for touchdowns. In one game against Detroit, he caught 10 for 149 yards, and uh, two of them went for TDs. He's the son of a high school football coach down in Texas. He was drafted 20th by the Colts in 1954, so it just goes to show that you don't have to be drafted 1, 2, 3, or 4 to make it in the National Football League. At left guard... For the Colts, a fellow is mighty happy this afternoon, Art Spinney. He's been in football for seven years, but this is the first time that he has reached the championship game. And he and a former college teammate, Art Gunneman, the defensive left tackle for Baltimore, are a couple of happy boys to be in this big one this afternoon. Spinney played end in college at Boston College, where he was captain of his team. And he was first of all captain guard when he came to the professional ranks. A cheer you hear in the background is for the start of the introduction of the New York Giants. And while they're talking about the Giants, let's uh, take a look at some of the boys who will be operating for the New York team this afternoon. Frank Gifford, the left halfback, was drafted number one by the Giants in 1952, and they've never been sorry for that draft. He is just about the most versatile backfield man in the game today. He's always among the league leaders in running and pass receiving, and he has also played defense for the Giants. A couple of years ago, he averaged about 50 minutes of football going both ways. Shirley Connerly, a quarterback, 38 years old, and he has 144 touchdown passes in his National Football League career, and that ranks second only to Sammy Ball. He once completed 36 passes in one football game. In the offseason, Connerly is a cotton farmer in Clarksdale, Mississippi. Kyle wrote at left end with the bonus choice in 1951. He was a great halfback and then was shifted to end. A brilliant all-around athlete. He played minor league baseball. And they tell us that he can give some of the golf pros a real tussle. Road in recent years has been hampered somewhat by knee injuries. Another boy who has been bothered by knee injuries is Alex Webster, the power-running right halfback who was signed by the Giants in 1955 after starring in Canadian football for two years. We mentioned Robostelli. He's an annual selection as an all-star defensive end. He's fast and powerful and a great pass rusher. And uh, in the defensive backfield for the Giants, Jim Patton, who this year led the league in interceptions with 11. He's the fastest member on their defensive backfield. He played his college football at Mississippi.
Sippy, a great ball hawk, and also a fine tackler. The Giants are introducing their defensive lineup. And uh, since we have a little time here, we'll tell you who will be in there when the Baltimore Colts have the ball. Jim Cantavis will be at left end. Robustelli will be at right end for the Giants. Dick Mojelaski will be at left tackle. And Roosevelt Greer at right tackle if uh, Rosie can make it. If not, M.L. Brackett, number 71, a third-year man from Auburn, will move in to the defensive right tackle spot. The linebackers for the Giants on the left side will be Cliff Livingston of UCLA. The middle guard or middle linebacker, Big Sam Huff of West Virginia. He's wearing number 70. And he's the fellow who did a tremendous job in covering Jimmy Brown in the games against the Cleveland Browns this year. Harlan Saveri, number 84, is the right linebacker for the Giants. Their defensive backfield composed of Lyndon Crow, number 41, Emlyn Zanel, number 45, and a veteran of 11 years in pro football, Jim Patton of Mississippi, and Carl Karolevich, who is in his sixth year and uh, saw service with the Detroit Lions before coming on to the New York Giants. The Giants will receive the kickoff. And in the first period of this football game, they'll be moving from north to south here at Yankee Stadium, from our left to our right. Again, the officials, the referee is Ron Gibbs of College of St. Thomas, the umpire, Lou Palazzi of Penn State, the headlinesman, Charlie Berry of Lafayette, the back judge, Cleo Deal of Northwestern, and the field judge is Charlie Sweeney of Notre Dame. Joe, uh, kickoff is just a moment away, and of course, all the marbles are riding on this one, so do you have anything to say before the kickoff? Yes, this, that I've never seen a game attract so many people, 70,000 fans, in a major city the size of New York, when all of the city's newspapers have not been publishing for a period of several weeks. The, uh, every ticket for this game was sold some days ago by midweek, including the standing room only tickets, and I can guarantee they're sitting in every available spot in Yankee Stadium today. They've got a lovely day for it, but it's a great tribute to professional football, to the New York Giants and the Baltimore Colts, that 70,000 fans approximately will show up here today with uh, the city barren of the normal means of communication in newspapers. Of course, radio and television have done a superb job of informing this population of uh, the project. And word of mouth has done it tremendously, too. It seems that New York is one great big village today, in which everyone is talking about. The New York Giants and the Baltimore Colts will be at it shortly, Bill. There go the Giants, and you're going to work. Okay, Joe, the ball is out on the 40-yard line. The Baltimore Colts will kick off. The New York Giants huddling at the 25-yard line. The members of the winning team in this football game will receive approximately $5,000, while the losers will receive slightly under $3,000. Don Maynard, number 13, and Phil King, number 24, going back into the double safety spot for the New York Giants, standing in the giant end zone. Number 44, Bert Rutchichar, former Tennessee star, has teed the ball up on the 40-yard line in preparation to kick off to the New York Giants. The Colts against the Giants for the World Championship of Professional Football. Rutchichar waiting for the whistle from referee Ron Gibbs, signals that he's all set. Here's the kick. Wretched Jar gets a good move going high and deep into the giant end zone. Maynard takes it and decides to stay in there for the touchback. And so, it'll be the New York Giants ball. First down and 10 yards to go. On their own 20-yard line, a tremendous boot by Burt Wretched Jar going high and deep into the New York end zone. We'll check the New York backfield for you just as soon as they break the huddle. Don Heinrich is at quarterback. Frank Gifford, the left halfback. Alex Webster at right halfback. And the fullback is Mel Triplett. Kyle Rose splits it right in. Flanker out to the left is Frank Gifford. Heinrich calls the signals. White tackle over the ball at center. Heinrich takes. He's going back to throw in the first play. He throws and it's broken up. By whom? Gino Marchetti, the big defensive left end. Jumps high in the air to bat it down. This is Heinrich never did get that ball out of his own backfield. It's Marchetti, 6'4", 240 pounder. Broke through to snap it down. This is something that I've been anticipating, watching for. Marchetti really roared in on Connolly. They know that they'll have to rush that passer both sides, and Baltimore did it on that play. Okay, Joe. Giants out of the huddle to the line of scrimmage. The ends are split. The slot back to the right is Frank Gifford. Heinrich at quarterback. Holds the signals. Gets the snap. Fakes the triplet. Goes back to throw. He throws. It is good. The left the 20. 25 yard line. Across the 25 and the 27. Again, Marchetti broke through. It was Don Shank who made the tackle. 
Marchetti was just about to get his hands on Heinrich when he got the ball away. Out to the left to Alex Webster. And Webster carried to the 27-yard line. A gain of seven yards. It's third down and three yards to go. With the Baltimore Colts taking time out. The score, the Giants nothing, the Colts nothing. Next time you go out for cigarettes, here's something to remember. You get better Macon's in a Marlboro. Better Macon's. Two little words that mean more flavor, more filter, more cigarette. The secret's in the Marlboro recipe. A special recipe created in Richmond, Virginia, from fine, mild tobaccos, specially blended, then carefully processed for filter smoking. This recipe teams up with Marlboro's improved filter to give you a generous helping of flavor in a smoke of surprising mildness. Flavor and mildness. That's the combination you want. That's the combination you get with Marlboro. Because you get better makings in a Marlboro. Pick up a carton next time you shop. You can tell today's Marlboro by the new gold crest on the pack and box. So just remember, whenever you buy cigarettes, for more flavor, more filter, more cigarette, for better makings, make it Marlboro. Well, on the first two plays from scrimmage this afternoon, the Giants took to the air. The first one batted down by Gino Marchetti. The big defensive left end of the Baltimore Colts. The second one, Heinrich got away just as Marchetti was about to slap him down. And Alex Webster hauled it in. It was a short pass taken at the line of scrimmage as Webster moved out to the left. And then he carried up across the 25 to the 27 before Schimmick made the tackle for the Colts. So it's second and third down, rather, and uh, three yards to go for the Giants. On their own 27 as they move out of the huddle. Right end, Kyle wrote a split. Left end, Schnauter just by a couple of steps. And Gifford is a flanker out to the left. Heinrich back to throw. Throws. It's good to wrote. He couldn't hold out of it. Had his hands on the ball. He was hit by Carl Tassett just as he was about to grab it. There's a marker on the field, however. The New York Giants were offside on the play. Kyle wrote with his back to the defender, Carl Tassett. Jumped high in the air, had his hands on it, was hit by Tassett and dropped in at about the 33-yard line. The Giants were offside on the play. The penalty was declined by the Baltimore Colts as it's now fourth down. And three yards to go for the Giants on their own 27-yard line. And Don Chandler, who was second in the league this year in punting, comes in the football game to do the kicking. Down deep, Tassett and Lenny Moore for the Baltimore Colts. Moore on the near side, Tassett on the far side. Tassett signals for a fair catch, and he takes it at the Baltimore 30-yard line. So the Baltimore Colts will take over on Tassett's fair catch. It'll be first down for the Colts. Ten yards to go on their own 30. 43-yard punt for Don Chandler. Well, it's spotted right at the 30. And so now the Colts have the ball for the first time this afternoon. United to pray Moore and Amici. Hand off to Moore. Wide to the left. Cuts back. He's in the first. Back the Number 21, Carl Karolevich makes the tackle. These boys came out there like gangbusters, that offensive unit. They went into an unbalanced line on the first play and sprung them right drive to the left that time. Looks so the both teams are cooking up surprises. New York has tossed three straight forward passes. Now Baltimore is on the attack, and they're ready to roll. And it's second down and 12 yards to go for the Colts. They move up to the line of scrimmage. United has the crowd to quiet down. Lenny Moore is a flanker out to the right this time. With Unitas in the backfield, it's Amici and Dupre. The handoff goes to Amici, straight ahead, and he pulls his way up to about the 34-yard line. Allen the horse, Amici, carrying up the middle. Carol Evich in there to make the tackle, along with Andy Robustelli and Sam Huff. So Amici picks up six yards from his own 28-yard line to the 34-yard line, and it is third down coming up and six yards to go. The Colts huddle back at the 25-yard line. Off they come. Ray Berry, the left end, splits by about eight yards. Lenny Moore, a flanker, way out on the right side, about uh, seven or eight yards in from the far sideline. United at quarterback, calls the signals. Colts line goes down. United starts to carry on a quarterback draw, gets away from one man, gets just about a yard, and there's a fumble, and the Giants recover. Giants 
ball, first and ten. Snelker splits it right in. Rook does the same on the left side. Slot back to the right is Frank Gifford. Heinrich, still at quarterback for New York, calls the signals. Gets the snap back from White Tuck and hands to Webster wide to the left, but he goes nowhere. Alex Webster pulled down by Don Shinnick on a shoestring tackle. Then along came Art Donovan to help out. But it was Shinnick who made the stop. A loss on the play of a couple of yards back to the 39-yard line. Alex Webster trying to swing around his own left end, but he couldn't make it. As Shinnick, the middle guard, came driving through to make the stop. Giants saddle outside the 45-yard line. They have the ball on the Baltimore 39. Second down, about 12 yards to go. Webster, a flanker out to the right. Giant with fumble. Triplet couldn't hold on to it. I believe the Colts have come up with it this time. It's the Baltimore Colts ball. It was bobbled originally by Heinrich, and then in handing it off to Triplet, Triplet lost it, and Gino Marchetti came up with it. And so it's Baltimore's ball, first and ten, on the 45-yard line. Gino Marchetti coming up with the ball. Goals first and ten. United calls the signals. He's going back to throw. He gets good protection. A little flare pass out to the left. Dupre has it. He gets to the 49-yard line. Tackle at the 49. By number 21, Carl Karolevich. Number 84, Harlan Saveri, helping out. United's got terrific protection that time. A gain of four yards. It'll be second down and six yards to go. And that's the first time that United has thrown this afternoon. The little player pass to L.G. Dupre as Dupre moved out to the left. Ball on the 49-yard line. Second down and six to go. Lenny Moore is a flanker out to the right. United calls the signals. Long count this time. The line goes down. The snap back to United. The handoff goes to Dupre, and he is really nailed as he gets just a yard of the 50-yard line. Hitting in behind his left guard. He was really dropped by number 84, Harlan Saveri, the linebacker on the right side for the New York Giants. And so Dupre gets one yard. It's third down and five yards to go. Baltimore backfield, United at quarterback. Dupre, the running halfback at left half. Lenny Moore is uh, normally the flanker. Once in a while, he does stay in the backfield as a runner. Amici is the fullback. It's Moore, flanked out to the right. The left end, Ray Berry is split. And the right end, Machella is tight. Unitas calls the signals. He takes. He's, go, he's going back to throw. He fires. Intercepted by Carol Evans the giant 40. Gets across the 45 to the 47. But it'll be Carl's ball first and 10. L.G. Dupre made the tackle. The forward pass. Thrown by Unitas. Intercepted by Carl Carol Evans, the former Syracuse University star. And Carol Evans got a return from the 40 to the 45-yard line in giant territory. So it's New York's ball, first and ten. Webster flanked out to the right. The left end, Kyle Rudd, is split. Flip out to Gifford, wide to the left, and he goes nowhere. Ray Brown comes up from the Baltimore secondary to make the stop. Heinrich flipping out to Frank Gifford. Gifford trying to get around uh, the corner, but he got nowhere. Actually lost a yard on the play, back to the 44-yard line. And at least in the early moments of this football game... These defenses are really tough. Ball on the 44 in Giant territory. Second down, 11. Webster flanked to the right. Kyle Rose split at left end. Heinrich takes. But gives to Triplett. Triplett stops at just about the line of scrimmage. He started to go wide to the left, stopped short, short and then uh, tried to cut, but he was hit just as he did by number 76, Big Daddy, Gene Litscombe. So there's no gain on the play. Triplett got to just about the line of scrimmage. The veteran Charlie Connerly starts to loosen up. And back to the Giant fence, right down in front of our broadcasting booth. It's third down and 11 yards to go. Giants have it on their own 44-yard line. They huddle back at the 35. Now they move out of there. Kyle Rose splits at right end. Frank Kippert is a flanker out to the left. Wytaka over the ball at center as Heinrich calls the signals. Takes. Goes back to throw. He throws to Triplett. He's at the 45. And he fights his way to the 50-yard line. Triplett takes the flare pass. And again, Gino Marchetti was putting pressure on. It was Pellington and Leo Sanford, or Don Shinnick, who made the tackle. All of the passes thrown so far have been of the flare variety, the short ones, out to either the right or the left. That one went for a gain of six yards, uh, just crossing the 50-yard line. And now Chandler goes in to do the punting. 
Fourth down, about five yards to go. Kicking from about his own 40-yard line. He gets the kick away. It's a good high one. Tassif waits for it at the Baltimore 9 to the 10. And he goes out of bounds at about the 14-yard line. Chandler's punt. Going down to the Baltimore 9-yard line. Carl Tassif, the veteran defensive back, moves it back. 41-yard punt, a 6-yard return. Ball is being spotted now at the 15-yard line. Driven out by Ed Hughes. And so the Colts have it first and ten deep in their own territory at the 15-yard line. No score in the football game. Eight minutes left to play in the first quarter. Baltimore out of the huddle. Lay Moore flanked out to the right. Unitas calls the signals. The left end, Ray Berry, splits by about five yards. Unitas back to throw. Gets good protection. Throws a long one. It is good to Moore. He has it at the giant 40. Down to the 30. Down to the 25-yard line. Lenny Moore. Called it in. He was tackled by Jim Patton. Lyndon Crow was defending on the play, but Moore made a great catch. A 55-yard pass play from quarterback John Unitas to the speedy halfback Lenny Moore. And the Colts come up with the first big play of the afternoon. But Moore made a great catch. Moore is flanked out to the right. Ball knows just over the giant 25. Unitas calls the signals. Gets the snap. Hands off to Amici, the fullback. Up the middle he goes and inside the 20-yard line, down to about the 19. Dick Mojuleski, number 77. Carl Karolevich, number 21. In there to make the tackle. Ball spotted at the 20-yard line, so Amici gets five yards. And it's second down and five yards to go. Baltimore threatening for the first time this afternoon. No score in the game. Little under seven minutes left to play in the opening period. Unitas calls the signals. He has uh, Moore flanked out to the right. Giants have a five-man line. Unitas gets the hands off to Dupre, but Dupre goes nowhere. Dupre got the handoff from John Unitas, but he was nailed by Dick Mojuleski just as soon as he got the ball. A loss of a yard on the play back to the 21-yard line. And it's going to be third down and six yards to go. And here's a big one coming up. Third down and six for the Baltimore Colts on the New York Giants 21-yard line. Giants have talked things over defensively. The Colts now break their offensive huddle. Ray Berry splits the top ten by about eight or ten yards. Moore is the flanker out on the right side. Unitas checks the New York defense, calls the signals. Amici splits from his position. Unitas back to throw. A whistle... 75, Jim Katkavich and Buzz Nutter, the Baltimore center, have a couple of words quickly separated. I believe Baltimore took too much time. The whistle blew, actually, before Nutter snapped the ball to the quarterback. And now the officials have a bit of, of a conference. Baltimore penalized. Back to the 25-yard line for a delay of game. And so, it's now third down, 11 yards to go. So let's see what the Colts come up with. They have the ball on the New York Giants, 25-yard line, just outside the 25. Barry splits at left end. And again, Lenny Moore. Dupre is the flank route to the right. The flip goes out to Lenny Moore. He tries to get around the corner, but he has dropped at about the 25-yard line. Cliff Livingston, number 89, making the tackle for the New York Giants. The flip went to Len Moore. He tried to get around the right end. He did uh, for just about a yard to the 24-yard line. And so now it's going to be Steve Myra trying a field goal. The ball being held by George Shaw from the 30-yard line. The ball is spotted, booted. It is no good, but there's a flag on the play. The Giants were offside. A 30-yard field goal try. No good. But the Giants were offside, and so Meyer will get another chance. Offside penalty against the Giants. This time, Meyer will be kicking from about the 26-yard line. Meyer's in his second year. He's 6'1", 235 pounds. He tries the short ones. Bert Ratchachar usually tries the long ones. 
A new football being thrown in. George Shaw, Baltimore's number two quarterback, will hold the ball. He's going to, his knee is down at about the 27-yard line. Signals being called. Spotted. It's blocked. It's blocked by Sam Huff and Carl Carolina. And the Giants take over. Sam Huff, number 70, can drive him through to block it. New York's defensive platoon again came through and they're uh, getting applauded of this crowd of 70,000 feet. They stymied the Baltimore attack, and now New York has taken over once more, and here we go with the veteran Charlie Connolly, I believe, at the throttle. Right, Joe. Connolly is in at quarterback. Gifford is a flanker out to the right. The ends are tight this time. The handoff to Webster. He goes wide to the left, cuts back in, but he gets just about a yard to the 22-yard line. Big guard Donovan, defensive left tackle for the Baltimore Colts. In there to make the tackle. Donovan, 6'3", 270 pounds. Plenty of meat on that Baltimore defensive line. Joyce at right end, 255. Marchetti at the left end is 240. Donovan, 270 pounds. And the right tackle, Gene Lipscomb, weighs 288 pounds. Ball at the 22-yard line is second down about nine. Webster flanks out to the right. The left end, Kyle Rudd, splits by about ten yards. Connerly at quarterback. The old master calls the signals. Gets set to throw. Throws the quick one to triplet the fullback. He's over the 30-yard line. Tackle made by Shinnick, number 66. Bill Pellington was the first one to hit triplet, but he got away from him, and Shinnick finally made the tackle. And again, it was that short blur pass out to the right this time to the fullback, Mel Triplett. And Triplett carried up over the 30-yard line to about the 31. And now the chain gang is being called in from across the way for a measurement. We have less than four minutes left to play in the opening period of this championship football game at Yankee Stadium. The Baltimore Colts nothing and the New York Giants nothing. It's short of the first down, so it's going to be third down and about a yard to go. Jim Lee Howell yells something into his players. New York backfield right now is Charlie Connerly at quarterback. Frank Gifford at left half. Alex Webster is at right half. And the fullback is Mel Triplett. The ends are Kyle Roque and Bob Schnelker. And they frequently exchange sides. Schnelker, most of the time, playing a tight end, while Roque is the split end. Giants have picked up uh, five first downs. Or three. Giants up there at the line of scrimmage. Webster. Blanked out to the right. The ends are tight. The flip goes to Gifford. Wide to the left. And he gets yardage. He's at the 35, the 40. He's at the 50. The bottom of 40. The 35. And he's down about the 31-yard line. Bill Pellington makes the tackle. Gifford doing some fancy running. Circled his own left end. Cut back and goes all the way down to the bottom of 31-yard line. A good block. Thrown by number 66, Jack Stroud, back in there this afternoon after being out with rib injuries. 38-yard run for Frank Gifford, and the Giants have the ball on the Baltimore 31-yard line. New York coming out of the huddle. This time it's a straight tee in the backfield. Left-hand road split by just a couple of yards. Connerly calls. Hands to triplet. Wide to the left. He cuts back in, but gets just about a yard to the 30-yard line. Really driven into the earth. Mark Donovan, number 70, in there to make the tackle. Triplett, got inside the 30-yard line, given to the 29, so it's a gain of uh, two yards on the play, second down, and eight yards to go. Giants move up to the line of scrimmage. Kyle Roach splits out, flanker out to the right. Gifford out to the left. Connerly rolls to his right. Throws a long one. No good. Intended for Kyle Rowe down inside the five-yard line. Carl Tassett, number 23, was defending. Getting the pressure on Connerly was the big left end, Gino Marchetti. As Connerly rolled to the right, tried to hit Kyle Rowe down inside the Baltimore five-yard line. But it's incomplete. Giants have now tried six passes and completed three of them. They have one first down. And the Colts also have one first down. That came on that long pass play from Unitas to Lenny Moore. It's been a defensive battle so far. 
And many football experts figured that that's what it was going to be. A little better than two minutes left to play in the first quarter. Giants move out of the huddle to the line of scrimmage. Straight T in the backfield. The end split. Connerly back to throw. He fires it. It is no good. Intended for Webster, but Webster fell down as he was cutting over the middle. Webster, I think, hit one of those damp spots on the field that slipped from the throwing out of the frosty surface. Because the ball was right on the button, Webster was wide open, but just as he reached for it, his feet went out from under him, and obviously he hit a wet patch on the field. I've been interested in the Giants running. They're running to the left, passing down the right side of the Baltimore defense. Baltimore is running when they do run over Big Rosie Greer, figuring he's hurt, and uh, they can do it. Now we're getting a field goal try, Bill. From the 36-yard line, Pat Summerall boots it. It's good. The Giants lead by a score of 3 to nothing. And Pat Summerall, who two weeks ago this afternoon, kicked them right into the Eastern uh, Conference race when he came up with a 49-yard field goal with just a couple of minutes remaining to beat the Browns 13-10 to in the final game of the regular season set up the playoff last week. Now he comes through with a 36-yard field goal, and the Giants are in front by a score of 3 to nothing. Going back in the double safety to receive the kickoff, Leonard Lyles, number 26, while at Louisville, billed as the fastest man in football. And on the other side, it's Jackie Simpson, another rookie, number 41, from the University of Florida. Don Chandler is setting the ball up in the 40-yard line to kick off for the New York Giants. Leonard Lyles, 5'11", 190 pounds. Chandler has the ball teed up on the 40. Lyles on the far side, and Simpson is on the near side. Giants in front, 3-0 as Chandler kicks off. Lyles takes it down on the goal line, comes straight out, the 5, the 10, the 15, moves to the players, is he hit? As he gets to just about the 20-yard line. It was Cliff Livingston, number 89, who was in there to make the tackle. 60-yard kickoff, a 20-yard return for Lyles, and Baltimore has it, first and 10, on the 20-yard line. Close out of the huddle, Lenny Moore goes out to the right, left end, Ray Berry splits, Unitas at quarterback, calls the signals, gets the snap, he goes back to throw, he fires it, Moore has it, at about the 26-yard line, tackled immediately, Lenny Moore... Went down the far sideline and uh, stopped short and came back to get it at the 26. Tackled immediately by Lyndon Crow, number 41. Unitas has attempted five and completed four in the first period with a minute and 15 seconds left to play in this quarter. The Colts have the ball second and four on their own 26-yard line. Again, Moore is out to the right. Bury the left end split. Hand off goes to Dupre. Dupre following the fullback. Moves in behind the right side of his line and gets up close to the 30-yard line. So it's about at the 29-yard line. It'll be third down and a yard to go. Emlyn Tunnell moving in from the New York secondary to help Dick Mojuleski make the tackle. Colts backfield. United, Dupre, Moore, Amici. Lenny Moore flanks out to the right. The ends are tight this time. Unitas at quarterback, calls the signals, gets the snap, fakes to Amici, goes back to throw, he throws, it is no good. Intended for Lenny Moore. It was broken up on the far side by Lyndon Crow. That time, Carl Karalevich, the right cornerback, had a good rush on Unitas. And so it's broken up. And now with just about 25 seconds left to play in the first quarter of this football game, Ray Brown comes in to do the punting. First time this afternoon that Baltimore has kicked. Lyndon Crow and Don Maynard, the double safety for the Giants. Brown gets the kick away, bounces Giant 40. Taken by Lyndon Crow at the 30. And he is driven all the way back to the 15-yard line. Sherman Pluck at number 79 was the first man downfield for the Baltimore Colts. Crow, in trying to get away from him, was driven all the way back to the 17-yard line. 
Cordell Bracey, reserve end, also in on that tackle. 38-yard punt, but uh, Lyndon Crow lost eight yards. Well, that's the end of the first quarter with a score of the New York Giants three, the Baltimore Colts nothing. This first quarter has been brought to you by Marlboro, the cigarette with better makings, more flavor, more filter, more cigarette. The secrets in the Marlboro recipes created in Richmond, Virginia from fine, mild tobaccos, specially blended, then carefully processed for filter smoking. Pick up a carton and pack or box next time you shop. The second quarter will be brought to you by Clinton Engines Corporation. Nearly 8 million Clinton air-cooled gasoline engines are in use today, delivering dependable power for all kinds of equipment in homes, on the farm, and in industry. Hundreds of manufacturers specify and rely on Clinton engines, for the Clinton Arrowhead trademark is the international symbol of quality. Right now, let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. These are the General Electric stations connected to EWGY and WGFM. The Baltimore boys, in a defensive huddle, break out of it now, move up to the line of scrimmage. The Giants huddle back inside the 10-yard line. Giants lead by a score of 3 nothing on the strength of a 36-yard field goal by Pat Summerall. And the Giants have the ball now, first and ten, on their own 17-yard line. Shirley Connerly at quarterback. Kyle Rhodes splits at left hand. Alex Webster is the flanker this time. He's out to the right. Connerly calls the signals. He gets the snap, and he's going back to throw. He throws the flare to Gifford, out to the left. Gifford, away from one man, is a fumble. And the Baltimore Colts have recovered. Ray Kraus in there for Baltimore, recovers as Gifford. In taking the pass from Connerly, did sidestep one man, but then was hit at about the 19-yard line. He fumbled, and the Colts have it. Ray Kraus, the veteran defensive tackle, coming up with it at the 20-yard line. Another big break for the Baltimore Colts. Unitas hands off to Moore. Wide to the left. Cuts back in. He gets down to about the 15-yard line. Sam Huff has him. And Moore finally is dumped to the earth by Sam Huff. Lenny Moore taking the handoff from the quarterback, John Unitas. Swinging out to the left. And he gets as far as the 16-yard line. So it's a gain of just about four. It'll be second and six. In the Baltimore backfield, United at quarterback. L.G. Dupre at left half. Lenny Moore at right half. And Alan Amici is the fullback. Dupre is a flanker out to the right this time, with Moore in the backfield as the running back. The left end very split by a couple of yards. United calls the signals. Hands to Amici, the powerful fullback. Hits in behind the right side of his line. Is dumped by Katkavich and Sam Huff after he gets in to about the 12-yard line. Good block thrown by Alex Sandusky to open the hole there. Ed Mojilewski also in on the stop for the New York Giants. The ball is spotted at about the 12-yard line. It'll be third down and two yards to go. Giants leading by a score of 3 nothing, but the Colts have the ball on the New York 12. Third down, two yards to go. Dupre flank to the right. The left end very is split. Unitas hands to Amici. Amici gets in close to the first down. And again it was Sam Huff who made a tackle right down at the ankles, but it's a first down. Alan Amici, the 6'1", 220-pound fullback from the University of Wisconsin, carries for the first down. Ball is in at about the 8-yard line. About the 9-yard line. So it is first down for the Baltimore Colts. They're at the line of scrimmage. Again, Dupre is the flanker of the right. Left end very split by just a couple of yards. United's the quarterback. Calls the signals. Hand out to Moore. Wide to the left. He gets by one man. He gets down to about the one, and it's ruled that he stepped out of bounds at the one-yard line. 
Jim Patton bouncing him out of bounds. Carl Karolevich had uh, his arms on Lenny Moore at or in back of the line of scrimmage. But Moore got away from him. And so the ball is on the one-yard line, and it is second down. Moore has tremendous speed for those sweeps around the end. Dupre is again flanked to the right. Unitas the quarterback. The line goes down. Snap back to Unitas. Hand off to Amici, the fullback, and he's in for the touchdown. Well, it didn't take the close one to capitalize on that break. Great Krauss recovered a fumble at the 20-yard line and at just five plays. The Colts moved the 20 yards for the touchdown, and they're in front by a score of 6-3. to three. Myra trying for the extra point. George Shaw holding. Ball will be spotted at the 10-yard line. It's good. Myra converts. And it is a 7-3 to three football game. The Baltimore Colts in front. 12 minutes and 35 seconds left to play in the second quarter. Giants took the lead on Summerall's 36-yard field goal, but the Colts came back as a result of the fumble recovery and went in for the touchdown that puts them in front. So now the Giants will receive Bill King and Don Maynard going back in the double safety. Bert Rechichar will kick off for the Baltimore Colts. King standing out on the New York goal line on the far side. Maynard, the speedster from Texas Western, is on the near side. Maynard, very slim, 6 feet, 178 pounds. On the other hand, King is a real big boy, 6'4", and 225 pounds. King is from Vanderbilt. Rechichar has teed the ball up on the 40-yard line. The Colts in front by a score of 7-3. Early in the second period of this championship football game at Yankee Stadium. Rechichar signals that he's all set. He gets the whistle and moves up on it. It's a low kick. Bouncing and taken by Triplett at the 15-yard line. Still on his feet as he crosses the 30-yard line, and he gets up to about the 33. Triplett had his hands on it, couldn't hold onto it. First down at about the 15. It was picked up by a lineman, Roosevelt Brown, who turned and handed it to Triplett. It was Myra who made the tackle at the 33-yard line. And so, the New York Giants have it. First and 10 on their own 33. Out of the huddle they come. Webster flanked out to the right. Kyle Rudd, about to end the split. Connor Lee at quarterback calls the signals. Gets the snap. Hand off to Triplett. Triplett gets nowhere. There's a fumble. But it is ruled, I believe, that the whistle blew the play dead before he lost possession of the ball. Coming in to make the tackle, number 83, Don Joyce. The defensive right end. As Triplett was boxed up after getting just about a yard to the 34-yard line. So it'll be second down and nine yards to go. Second and nine for the New York Giants. They have the ball on their own 34-yard line. And they trail in the football game by a score of 7-3. to three. Giants out of the huddle. Webster takes the flanking spot out to the right. Kyle Rudd at left and is split. Connerly at quarterback. Calls the signals, gets the snap from Witeka. He goes back to throw. He fires. Rode has it. Rode has it at about the 48-yard line in Giant territory. Milt Davis makes the tackle. But it is a first down. It is being spotted at the 48-yard line in Giant territory as Charlie Connerly connects with the veteran left end, Kyle Rode. Giants ball first and ten on their own 48. Defensively, the Colts have Marchetti and Joyce at the end. Let's give it right tackle. Giants have to put the ball in play. Webster flanked out to the right. Connerly back to throw, but he's smothered back inside his own 40 yard line. Bill Kellington, number 36, the linebacker, came crashing through. They fired all three linebackers to go on that one, Bill. They've been doing that, both teams, and Baltimore particularly. 
They put all three of the middle line of the linebackers through that four-man defensive line, sent seven-man seven rush in, and it paid off that time. These two teams are the two finest defensive teams in the National Football League, and the defensive play is really eye-popping. A nine-yard loss, and it's second down to 19 yards to go. Schnelker splits it right end. Rhodes splits it left end. The slot back to the right is Alex Webster. Hand off to Gifford. Reverse to Webster. Webster comes to the 40-yard line and gets to about the 43, and that's all. In there to make the tackle, Schenick and Lipscomb. Also Myra. Myra's in there in place of Leo Sanford. And Krauss is in at left tackle in place of Art Donovan. The ball on the 43-yard line on the double reverse. The handoff uh, going from Connerly first to Gifford and then uh, to Webster. Webster gets just about four-yard gain. It's third down, 15 yards to go. Giants huddling back inside their own 35-yard line. It's the Baltimore Colts 7, the New York Giants 3. Nine and a half minutes left to play in the first half of this game. Webster flanked to the right. The ends are split. Connerly going back to throw. He throws. Little one right over the middle. Gifford had it and couldn't hold it. Marchetti driving in on Charlie Connerly. But Connerly got the ball away, and Gifford was there, and there was no one near him. It was just a short one, just at about the line of scrimmage. So the Baltimore defense again is held. It's now fourth down and 15 yards to go. Connerly, or the Giants, have thrown ten passes and have completed five. Chandler in there to do the kicking. Simpson and Carl Tassel, the deep man for the Colts. Simpson takes it at the 19. There's a fumble. Let's see who came up with it. I believe Tassel recovered it. It is ruled that Carl Tassel recovered. John Chandler won it. And in the face of... Now it is ruled that the Giants recovered. It's the Giants ball. Roosevelt Brown on the 11-yard line. Official gave the signal that Tassett had recovered. But the ball goes to the New York Giants at the 11. Simpson signaled, or took the ball, couldn't hold on to it. yard line. Giants first and ten. Connerly calls the signal. Gets the snap. Flips out to Gifford. Gifford fumbles. And the Baltimore Colts recover. There was Milt Davis who made the tackle. And let's see. It's big John Joyce, number 83, who came up with the football. Well, we've seen some fumbles and some pass interceptions here in the first half. The ball on the 14-yard line. ball, first and ten, on the cold 14. The ends are split. Back to throw, Unitas. Throws a long one for Dupre, no good. Lyndon Crow covering all the way. The pass intended for Dupre, who just uh, set sail along the near sideline, was in New York territory at about the 45-yard line. Unitas has attempted seven this afternoon so far and has completed four of them. But that one was incomplete, and so it's going to be a second down. And ten yards to go for the Colts. The Colts huddle back inside their own five-yard line. Lenny Moore flanks to the right. The left end, right very is split. United checks the New York defense. United goes back to throw. Fires. It's good over on the far side to Ray Berry at just about the 18-yard line. He was tackled immediately by Carl Karolevich. Boy, these defensive lines really putting on an exhibition here at Yankee Stadium. Ray Berry gets the ball up to the 19-yard line. It's going to be third down at about five yards to go. Third and five for the Baltimore Colts on their own 19-yard line. They beat the Giants by a score of 7-3. to three. 
pitched. Eight minutes left to play in the first half. Lenny Moore is a flanker out to the right. Two men over here to cover him. United at quarterback calls the signals. Barry sl split it left end. They fake to Dupre. The pass to the fullback to Nietzsche. He's at the 20, 25. Across the 25 to about the 29-yard line, the 30-yard line. Sam Huff makes the tackle. Again, that flare pass work to the fullback, Amici, as Amici moved out to the right, got a good block from George Fries, the right tackle, and finally was hauled down by Huff at the 29-yard line. And so it is a gain of 10 yards on the play, United to Ellen Amici, and for the Colts, it is first down and 10 yards to go. Baltimore out of the huddle, Munchkeller has split it right end this time. The flanker is out to the left, L.G. Dupre is the flanker, Lenny Moore in the running back field now. Moore takes it, cuts in behind the left side of his line, comes up across the 35 to about the 39-yard line. It's going to be close to a first down. Cliff Livingston made the tackle. Jim Parker, the offensive left end for the Colts, blurred the way for Lenny Moore. And he got up to the 39-yard line. And I believe we're going to have a measurement. So now with timeout, the score is 7-3 in favor of the Baltimore Colts. do Clinton air-cooled gasoline engines supply the power for the products of over 800 leading manufacturers, but they're also the heart of such completely Clinton-made products as the Clinton Chainsaw. There are four basic models, all of them... Power match! Yes, power match to the job. Professional woodsmen, farmers, homeowners, and municipal employees prefer them for the many diversified jobs they perform. From the ball-bearing roller tip to the fast-track chain to the powerful Clinton engine, a Clinton chainsaw is perfectly... Power match! Yes, power match to its job and completely Clinton manufactured. So, too, is the Clinton air-cooled outboard motor. An amazingly convenient outboard that weighs only 30 pounds, yet delivers a full 5 horsepower. You'll recognize these fine Clinton products by the world-famous Clinton Arrowhead trademark. International symbol of quality. yards, and Lenny Moore, moving in behind his uh, left side of his line, gets up to about the 49-yard line, and that's going to be close to another first down. And again, the referee, Ron Gibbs, is calling for the chain gang. Plenty of diversion in this Baltimore backfield. Dupre and Lenny Moore, extremely fast. Alan Amici, a real power runner. Baltimore in possession. On their own 49, and it is just shy of the first down. So it's going to be third down, and just uh, inches to go for the first down. The Baltimore Colts leading the Giants by a score of 7-3, to three, and they have moved the ball all the way from the 14-yard line on this series. That's the spot where Don Joyce recovered the fumble. They've moved it out to the 49-yard line in their own territory, where it's third down and inches to go. Baltimore backfield, Unitas, Dupre, Moore, and Amici. The ends, Barry and Mutchler. The tackles, Parker and Fries. The guards, Spinney and Sandusky. In the center is Buzz Nutter. Nutter is over the ball. Lenny Moore is flanked out to the right. The ends are tight this time. Unitas calls the signals. He gives to Amici the fullback, and he fires straight ahead, and I believe gets up to about the 50-yard line before he's piled up by the middle of the New York Giant line. Harlan Sperry, Sam Huff, Cliff Levinson all in there, but it's enough for the first down. The ball knows just over the 50-yard line in, into New York Giant territory. So Amici picked it up, and it's first and ten for the Baltimore Colts. The Colts now have five first downs. Two, two for the New York Giants. United's back to throw. He fires. Ray Berry made a diving catch over on the far sideline. It is ruled incomplete. Carl Carroll Everett was covering on the play. It is ruled that he caught the ball out of bounds. Ray 
Terry, the left end, going down and out and making a diving try for it along the far sideline in front of the Baltimore bench. But it is ruled that he caught it out of bounds, so it is incomplete, and it is now second down. And ten yards to go for the Colts. The ball on the 50-yard line with Baltimore leading by a score of 7-3. to three. Lenny Moore flanked out to the right. Line goes down. The snap back to Unitas. He hands off to Dupre. Dupre comes forward and gets to about the 46-yard line. In there to make the tackle was Frank Uso, who is in the football game in place of Roosevelt Greer at defensive right tackle. Ball spotted at the giant 46-yard line. So Dupre got four, and it's second down and six. The Colts huddle back at their own 45. The ball is on the giant 46. Baltimore out of the huddle. Lenny Moore flanks out to the right. The left end very splits. United sparks the signals. Amici shifts his position in the backfield. United back to throw. Gets protection. Run for the ball. 45, 40, 35. Down to the 30-yard line. Frank Uso over there to make the tackle along with Sam Huff. United back to throw. Couldn't find the receiver in the open. Decided to take off with it. And then he did. And he goes to the giant 30-yard line. 16-yard run by the flashy quarterback of the Baltimore Colts. And it is first down and 10 yards to go for Baltimore on the giant 30. The Colts break out of the huddle. L.G. Dupre takes the flanking spot to the right. Ray Berry splits at left end. Giants have five men up there on the line of scrimmage. United gives to Lenny Moore. And boy, he's really upended by Sam Huff. Cliff Livingston, number 89, also helping out. Huff just grabbed him low, picked him up, and dropped him at the 29-yard line. So there's a gain on the play of just a yard, and it's second down and nine yards to go. With Dupre and Moore in there, the Baltimore backfield is much smaller than the New York Giant backfield. Dupre and Moore weigh just 190 pounds each. Dupre out to the right. United back to throw. There's a marker on the play. United starts to run with the ball. And he gets to about the 26-yard line. Ed Mojilewski, number 77, grabbed him. Also, Cat Cabot, number 75. United again found his receivers covered and decided to run with it. He got into about the 25-yard line, but let's see what the penalty is going to be. Andy Robustelli and John United bearing with the officials. United on that play picked up about four yards from the 29 to the 25 before he was knocked down. They're still conferring with the officials down at the 25-yard line. And now Robicelli says he'll uh, take the penalty. So Baltimore is going to be penalized. Five-yard penalty. It's illegal motion. And so the ball is moved back to the 34-yard line. Illegal motion call against the Baltimore Colts. The down is the second down, but it's now 14 yards to go. The ball on the New York Giants, 34-yard line. Much on our right end splits way out. United's back to throw. Fires. It's good. A diving pass made by the left end, I believe it is. Ray Berry. It is Berry. Carl Karolevich discovering. But Berry made a great diving pass down at the 21-yard line. A gain of about 13 yards on the play. Ball spotted at the 21. So it's going to be third down there for the Colts. And one yard to go for the first down. Ray Berry, their fine receiver. 6'2", 190-pounder. From SMU. Lenny Moore, a flanker, out to the right. The Colts move to the line of scrimmage. But now a timeout has been called. Two minutes remaining. The score is Baltimore 7, the Giants 3. Hello, I'm Don Thomas. 
as president of the Clinton Engines Corporation, I think you ought to know about our new sales policy because it directly concerns everyone who manufactures and everyone who buys gasoline-powered equipment for homes, farms, or industry. Our policy is simply this. To protect the public, we will not sell our engines to manufacturers of lawnmowers, killers, tractors, pumps, or hundreds of other applications unless we first are satisfied that these products meet our high standards of quality, performance, and safety. This means that you will find with an engine only on the finest equipment. You may buy them with complete confidence. To find your Clinton dealer, look in the yellow pages under Engine, Gasoline. There are more than 10,000 Clinton sales and service dealers in the United States, Canada, and 77 countries throughout the world. United States, takes to Amici, throws down in the end zone, and it's a touchdown. Hey, Barry, takes the pass in the end zone, and the ball number four is for the second time, and the lead to New York Giants, 13 to 3. Third down and 19 yards to go. 
Jar took possession on their own 11, and the seconds are ticking away. Just about 10 left in the first half of this football game. Gifford flanks out to the left. Kyle Rose flips it right end. Connerly calls the signals. This could be the last play of the first half. Let's go with the ball. Wide to the left. Cuts back in. He gets to the 15 to about the 20. He fumbles. It is picked up by Andy Nelson, but the whistle has blown it dead. Well, it's the end of the first half, and the score is the Baltimore Colts 14, the New York Giants 3. He's a legion and professional for many, many years in all capacities, as a player, as a coach, and now as a broadcaster, Joe Bowen. Joe, come on in. Thank you, Bill McColgan, and uh, Don Chandler of New York has set the ball up on the kicking tee. The Giants elected to receive at the start of the game. Now it's Baltimore's choice, and Don is ready to kick to uh, for Baltimore Simpson and Lyles. Lenny Lyles and Jackie Simpson. Lenny Lyles of Louisville and Jackie Simpson of Florida. They're flanking the goalpost to our left. The lights are on and have been on here since 1 o'clock in Yankee Stadium, in spite of the fact that they're not needed, and uh, I hope will not be needed during the course of the afternoon. It's just a precaution. Here's the kick, sailing downfield, and it's taken by Lyles right on the goal line to the 5, the 10. He cuts to his left, swings up the field, is met by a giant at about the 18-yard line and dragged out of bounds at about the 19, where it's first and 10 for Baltimore, with a 60-yard kick and a 19-yard return for Lenny Lyles of the opening kickoff. Billy Lott, a Mississippi boy, is the tackler. First and 10 for Baltimore. Baltimore has not been operating with Johnny Unitas at quarterback. And Dupre is flanked to the left, leaving Amici and Moore back as the running backs. The right end, uh, Machler, is flanked wide to the right. First and 10 on their own 19 for Baltimore. Baltimore leading 14 to 3. The handoff is to Moore. Moore tries the right side of the giant line, picks up five. As, uh, as he advances the ball behind sharp blocking of Parker once again. And Raymond Barry to the 24-yard line. He's stopped finally by Jim Katkavich of New York. And uh, it's second down, six to go on the 24-yard line of Baltimore. Baltimore leading 14-3. to three. We've just gotten the third quarter underway here in the National Football League's championship game at Yankee Stadium in New York. Lenny Moore flanked wide to the right now. And back goes United to throw. Sets, looks, throws out to the right. And it's grabbed off here by uh, Jim Mutchler after a, a fake that cleared the short right ends of the right flat zone for Mutchler. He's tackled, driven out of bounds by Emlyn Tunnell on the uh, 32 or 30, 32-yard line of Baltimore, where it's a first and 10 to go for uh, the Baltimore team. Baltimore's ball, first and 10 on their own, 32 now. The Colts lead the Giants, 14 to 3. Unitas has all backs in. The handoff is faked to Amici, given to Moore, and Moore is dropped for a loss. Back on his own 26-yard line by Holland Sparry, the right side linebacker who fired through the right side of the New York line and nailed Lenny Moore. Well, the one end of the ball is on the 25. So it's second down coming up now, and about 17 to go for a first down for Baltimore as the Giants' powerful defense asserts itself. Lenny Moore flanks wide to the right this time. Again, two men out to cover him. Lyndon throw deep, short, Livingston, the left side linebacker. And so much noise here that a momentary timeout is called by Ron Gibbs. And Baltimore reassembles for a huddle call as Gibbs drops back into the huddle. Gibbs then comes to the ball, indicates ball ready for play. Start the clock. And away we go again. 14 to 3, Baltimore leading New York. We're just getting, getting the third period underway here at Yankee Stadium. And we're anticipating fireworks again. Moore wide to the right. Back goes United. Sets, throws. It's good. It's hit by Barry, grabbed off by Barry, the left end, a short hook pass, which uh, which finds him tackled as a disturbance on the far side of the field, but immediately the officials are into it to uh, stop it, as Barry is piled up directly in front of the Baltimore bench at about the 39-yard line, uh, the 43-yard line of, uh, well, it's spotted on the, four, the 40-yard line of Baltimore. That's 10 out of 14 for Unitas. He's on the beam today. He now has about three yards to go for a first down, and it's third down coming up. 
That hook pass to Barry got him what he wanted. A chunk of yardage would put him within striking distance of the first down. He maneuvered Baltimore 86 yards. About five first downs along the way with a fine mixture of short passes and runs in the closing moments of the second period to put Baltimore out in front by the 14-3 score advantage they now possess. And Baltimore is huddling, wearing white. The New York Giants wearing the blue jerseys, blue helmets. Baltimore wearing the white helmets with the horseshoe emblem on either side. Moore flanked wide to the right again. This time only Lyndon Crow comes out to cover him as the Giants fall up to stop the anticipated drive for the first down. Here is uh, the ball to Dupre. Marker's down on the field as Dupre hits to about the 43 and a possible first down with a tackle made by Dick Mozaleski of the Giants, aided by Emlyn Cunnell. Let's see what the markers are for. It's offside against the Colts. Moves the ball back to the uh, 35-yard line of Baltimore as the penalty is accepted by the New York Giants and leaves the situation now third down with eight to go instead of third and three. So there'll be a change now in the New York defense, I'm sure. Yes, here comes Dundee Moore out. No, they're still trying, they're still trying to play more with only one man. And United goes back to throw, sets, looks, throws. It's good to Dupre out to the left, and Dupre is tackled at about the 38-yard line as he's held short there with Sam Huff and Carl Carolivitz. But double-teaming him at about the 38-yard line. So streaming onto the field come the members of the kicking team of the Baltimore Colts as they prepare to kick fourth down coming up now at about four and a half yards to go for a first down. New York drops back uh, Lyndon Crow and uh, Maynard. John Maynard has double safety and kicking Brown back on his own 24 for Baltimore. Fourth down four, remember, on the uh, 38 of Baltimore, and Brown kicks from about the 25. Sends a good high spiral to chase the double safety to Ben Bank. Maynard catches it on about the 15. Starts up the field, dodges one man, has tumbled to earth on the 21 yard line with uh, a thud as moving in on him comes Ordell Bra- Bracey and Myra for Baltimore. 48 yard kick and a seven yard return. The New York Giants ball in this hole with this crowd of fans for the New York Giants. Smoke up, get a full head of steam as they plead for a score from the Giants. Kyle Rowe flanked to the left. Charlie Connolly at quarterback. The handoff here goes to Gifford. Gifford on a trap over the middle gets nowhere. He runs into Big Art Donovan for one. And the middle linebacker, Don Schinnick, for another. And is piled up. At about the 21-yard line, with Gino Marchetti pinching in hard from the left side. So it's second down coming up, and still a shade under 10 yards to go for a first down. New York's ball, late trail, 14-3, Baltimore leads. Second down, almost 10. Connolly back to throw, sets, throws out to the left. It's good to Gipper, but Gipper is trapped and nailed by Steve Myra. Playing in that defensive platoon for Baltimore. The gain is short. Matter of fact, there's a, there's a loss on the play. Not a 3 yard loss. Back to about the 18-yard line. And we're at an angle from the play. We're at the opposite end of the field at about the 25-yard line, which is one reason why the uh, guard lines are a little hard to distinguish at the side of the field end of the field to your right. Connolly back to throw now in a third and 13 situation. He's rushed hard, ducks one, but he can't duck the other, and he's down for a long loss at about the 12-yard line. With Dart Donovan making the tackle on him. Intense pressure coming from Joyce at right end, whom he eluded. And then Donovan, as he shook loose from Joyce, making the tackle that dropped the veteran Charlie Connolly, the oldest active player in the National Football League, back on his own, uh, about on his own 11-yard line. And it's fourth down coming up with about 19 to go as Chandler drops back into his own end zone to kick for uh, New York. Tassett and we've got Moore down for his double safety. Moore signals for a fair catch. Takes on the 41-yard line of Baltimore. And the ball is spotted there. Lenny Moore, fair caught on the Baltimore 41, where it's first and 10 to go with Baltimore leading 14-3 to in the third period. 
We have almost five minutes gone up. And a 48-yard kick by Chandler, who is on second only to Sam Baker in the National Football League in punting. He has an average of 44 yards a try. And he kicks so high that he forces many fair catches. His defensive line linemen are down covering so well. Plenty of time to do it. United is back to throw on a first down try. Sets, looks, throws one down the middle. That's grabbed off by Mutchler, and he's tackled as he makes the catch by Patton in New York Giants territory on about the 28-yard line of New York. Well, it'll be first and ten to go. Jim Mutchler, former Notre Dame captain, down the middle, catches a 31-yard pass play as he made the catch, leaping into the air. Jim Patton, the right safety there for New York, knocked his legs out from under him and dropped him on the 28-yard line of New York, where it's first and ten to go for Baltimore. Baltimore on the move again. They lead 14-3 to and missed the third period with about five minutes gone of it. A single flank to the right is Boer. Here's the handoff to Dupre. Dupre is uh, piled up at about the line of scrimmage. Little or under little, if any, gain on the play as he runs smack dab into Jim Kent Cabbage and Sam Huff with Emblin Tunnell coming up from the secondary to bring him down. Most of the time, New York is in a tight seven-man line. With the third. They start with a basic four of Kent Cabbage, Mozaleski, Greer, and Robustelli, backed up by Livingston, Huff, and uh, Zvare. But those three linebackers move in and out of the line, and they pop up at various places, making it a seven a good deal of the time. Here it's second down now and nine to go. The ball on the 27, uh, the 27-yard line of New York. As United drops back to throw, looks, throws to Barry. It's broken up. And Carl Karlovitz came in at the last moment to get a hand on that ball and to bat it out of Raymond Berry's hands. Ray Berry is the top pass catcher of uh, the Baltimore Colts. He caught 56 during the regular season for a total of 794 yards and nine touchdowns. He's caught one touchdown pass today. Third down, nine to go now on the 27 of New York. This time it's Dupre flying to the right as United comes back to throw again. Fakes watch, try, hits Barry on a hook, and Barry is tackled by Carol Livitz and by Huff as he makes the catch. Good for a first down. For United, he's now hit on 13 out of 18 forward passes. And the boy is very definitely on the beam. University of Louisville product. He's 25 years of age in his third year in the National Football League. He's a six foot one inch, 190 pounder, but he looks slim out there. And it's first down now, and 10 to go on the New York 15 yard line. Here is United's hitting his flanker man Moore. Moore is tackling it down, but on about the uh, four yard line of New York, I would say, by Lyndon Crow. The ball is on about the four or the three yard line of New York. And we have now uh, seven and a half minutes coming up. Seven and a half minutes to go. We're about halfway through the third period here at Yankee Stadium. Brown comes in to replace Barry as the New York team plans to put on a goal line defense here. First and goal to go on the three of New York for Baltimore. Baltimore leading 14 to three. They head off to Amici. He swings, veers to his left, and hits through that goal line or close to it, but we've got no indication of a touchdown as Huck and Tunnell combined to bring uh, Amici down. The ball is spotted on the New York uh, one-yard line where it's second and goal to go. New York is in a tight eight to a nine-man line, ready to dig in and defend. Alan Amici headed for the middle of the line and veered to his left on that one, as he uh, so often does. Lenny Moore flanked wide to the left this time, leaving Amici and Dupre back as uh, United prepares to take. Second and goal to go. United is on a sneak behind a wedge charge. Hits uh, into uh, the giant defense. We're getting a call for a timeout from referee Gibbs, an official timeout just to unpile that great mass of humanity at the goal line and find the ball underneath it. Ball ready for play. The nose of the ball almost on the giant goal line. He picked up only about a foot or a foot and a half. He still has uh, about a foot and a half to go for a first down, and it's third down coming up. Less than a yard to go for a first down for Baltimore. Lenny Moore flanked wide to the right again. Amici and Dupre back with United in front. So Amici, Amici behind the left side of the line, behind Parker, the big blocker. File drives into the New York line. Again, no signal for a touchdown, but we've got the signal for the, uh, for the uh, timeout officially to unpile the mass of humanity again. And it looks as though that New York Giants defense has stymied Baltimore once again. Yes, New York's 
defense has held them. And the ball is now on the one-yard line, where it's fourth down and goal to go. And the New York defense is tremendous to do here at this stage. But can they do it once more? They've had to dig deep into the emotional well. Again, the same offensive setup. And again, Unitas sends his lineman down. Quick tosses out to Amici, swinging wide to the right, and he's thrown for a loss on the five-yard line. And the tackle made by Livingston, and the New York Giants defense is great. They hold him off. Baltimore leading 14 to 3, had a chance to get some icing on the cake as they march steadily down to the New York one and a half foot line, and there the New York defense manifested itself. Bill wasn't that a dandy. It sure was. It looked for a moment as if Dupre was going to get around that right end, but Livingston was wise to the call, and he was in there and made a fine defensive play to stop it. So now the Giants have a first and ten on their own five. First and ten to go for the York. Connolly. Heading off here to Gifford, and Gifford over the middle. Picks up a yard or two. Picked up more than a yard or two. He moved it out to about the uh, ten-yard line, a five-yard crack there. With uh, a timeout, uh, a timeout being called on the field. With uh, Giant New York taking timeout, the score is Baltimore 14 and New York 3. Remember this. Lots of people besides Johnny seem to be calling for Philip Morris today. And the reason's pretty simple. They like mildness, but they don't like filters. In fact, more than half the smokers in America prefer cigarettes without a filter. If you're one of this happy majority, then Philip Morris is the cigarette for you. You get a full helping of flavor with today's Philip Morris. It gives you a robust flavor that tastes good every time you smoke. And you get it without a filter, and you get it mild. So if you like mildness, but you don't like filters, remember this suggestion from Johnny. Call for Philip Morris. Philip Morris, in pack or box. Pick up some next time you shop. The New York Giants have the ball. On their own 10 yard line, it was second down and five to go when play is resumed, as we're still in the timeout period. The New York Giant defensive team has, in addition to Kent Cambridge, Mozaleski, and Yuso and Greer at right tackle. Yuso's been going most of the way. Robert Kelly at the right end. The linebackers, Farley and the Livingston and uh, Huff. Here they go again, however, second and five, and uh, moving with that ball to uh, about the nine yard line comes Phil King, who's been operating at fullback. It's now, he picked up about three yards on the play. It's third down coming up and about three to go. He was trying the right side of the Baltimore line, and Lipscomb and Joyce held him to a couple of yards gained on the play. New York has given it left half back, King at right half back, and flanked wide to the right goes Webster, the right half back, King at fullback. Is the is McConnelly faking the King throwing down the middle? Road is in the open. He's got it, but he's shakes first one man, shakes first another. He's been chased from behind and brought down. On uh, there's a fumble on the play. Webster drives, doesn't make it. He's piled up short of the goal line. 
And they've got to unpile that mass of humanity again. So let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. And they've got to unpile that mass of humanity again. So let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. Back in the Yankee Stadium, the ball is still on the one yard line. It's low, but that's where it went. It was hitting down, and it's second and goal to go. And now, the lead's second best defensive unit, Baltimore's, is being tested by New York as New York has second and goal with Baltimore leading 14 to 3 in this the third period. Here is the handoff to Trippett, and Trippett smashes. Baltimore has 14. 14 to 9. 90 yards. In five plays. New York went with three minutes, 45 seconds to go. In the third period, and here, a try for the extra point is Summerall. Summerall's kick is good, and the score becomes 14 to 10. And uh, with uh, New York taking time out now, the score is Baltimore 14 and New York 10. Julie London sings the Marlboro song. Where there's a man, there's a Marlboro. You like the flavor of a Marlboro. Good silver, good flavor, good mild smoke. Make yours the filter made by Marlboro. You get better making in a Marlboro. More flavor, more filter, more cigarette. Pick up a cut. You get a lot to like with a Marlboro filter, flavor, flip top box. You get better makings in a Marlboro. More flavor, more filter, more cigarette. Jam at the first to kick off for New York. And the ball sails downfield to be taken by Simpson on the two-yard line. Simpson to the 5, the 10, the 15, the 20. He's hit and run on the 25-yard line by Ed Hughes in the kickoff team for New York. New York moved 90 yards in five plays for the touchdown. And on this kickoff return, it was a 58-yard kick and a 23-yard return by Simpson. And the ball was ready to go again. Joe, and that goal line stand by the Giants might be just what they needed to spark their offense out here. It certainly has inspired it. Now here goes Baltimore again with first and ten of their own 25. United is handing off down to Dupre on a crossfire. Dupre picks up two. It looks over the face is inspired too because New York obviously has come up with uh, a much more inspirational brand of play since that goal line defense fired this crowd of 70,000. I'm sure fired you listening across the nation. Cabbage, Bozaleski, and Huff stopped Dupre on that last play. Held him to a two-yard gain of second and eight to go. Ball on the 27-yard line of uh, Baltimore with New York trailing by four now. New York, Baltimore leads 14 to 10. Third period has 2.45 left to go as United goes back to throw. Right, he's hit, down, and dropped the line. On the 19-yard line to the 20-yard line. With Dick Bozaleski following up the high rush of Jim Katkevich. On the left side, and Mozaleski bringing him down. Mozaleski seems shaken a bit, but he's all right. He shakes it off and steps right back into place. Ball is on the, between the 19 and the 20-yard line of Baltimore now. Getting a six-yard loss, make it coming up here now. Third down, and about 16 to go for a first down. Baltimore leading by a score of 14 to 10 with the fired up New York Giants team meeting the high fired offense of the Colts. Many more wide to the right, two men covering him. United States back, sets, rushed again, he runs, and he's up to the 20, up to the 25, he's to the 27, and brought down in the 28 yard on as he picks his way through the middle of the onrushing New York Giant lineman to be stopped by Holland Sparre, 84, and the New York, New York Giant middle linebacker. Right side linebacker, I should say. Sam Huff takes care of the middle. Two minutes 
Let's go now. In the third quarter, again the stadium, Baltimore leading. 14 to 10, it's fourth down coming up, 7 to go, the ball on the Baltimore 28 yard line, and back to kick is Brown, standing on his own 15, he kicks, sails a high kick downfield, which drives Maynard back, Maynard takes on about the 15, swings wide to his right across the field to pick up his blockers, and cuts back again to run right into trouble, as he's brought down at about the 19 yard line by Baltimoreans, whose Colts uh, are led by Steve Byra, we see with a 57-yard kick and a two-yard return on the play. Now let's see whether that high emotional supercharge of the New York Giant team, which seemed to, seemed to be taken by them, as Bill McColgan pointed out, when their goal line defense, time at the Baltimore Colts, is going to stay alive. They go 90 yards in five plays for the last, uh, their, most, their only touchdown, their first touchdown of the game. Summerall kicked a 36-yard fielder, field goal early in it. Here, Springer wide and revamp, reversing his field on the flag to be stopped by Gino Marchetti, goes L Alex Webster. And uh, he picked up uh, a few yards on it, not many. He started to his left, then came back to his right. To be brought down by Marchetti, the left end, who saw him reverse his field. Racing into the ball game is McAfee, Ken McAfee, in reserve at end at one of the offensive ends. is at left end. Split wide to the left is Gifford, leaving Triplett and uh, Webster, and uh, Webster back. And Connolly goes back to throw on second down throws. It's good to Stoker. Stoker is grabbed as he makes the hook catch by Tosset. Now Tosset in the secondary of Baltimore on uh, the 40-yard line of New York. 41, right on the 40-yard line of New York. Where it's the first down for New York and 10 to go. A 17-yard game on that hook pass to Schnell. So we've come to the end of the third quarter. That's the end of the third quarter. The score is Baltimore 14 and New York 10. This portion of today's game has been brought to you by Philip Morris. If you like mildness but don't like builders, call for Philip Morris. The fourth quarter will be brought to you by the High Grade Food Products Corporation. Hello, this is Regis Toomey speaking for High Grades. While you're enjoying the game today, I hope you're also enjoying some High Grades all-beef frankfurters. The juiciest, tastiest franks of all. They're all beef through and through. High Grades all-beef frankfurters. Hot dog. Joe Bolin with Bill McCogan at Yankee Stadium in New York City, where the New York Giants have fired back into the ballgame after trailing 14 to 3 at halftime. A 90 yard drive in five plays, the key play of which was a forward pass to Kyle Rope, which uh, he caught over the middle, carried for about 10 more yards, fumbled, and then the play covering 86 yards at all. Alex Webster picked up the ball and raced to the one yard line of Baltimore. We thought for a moment he was tackled and hit as he, uh, as he thought as to us, he crossed the goal line. But obviously we were in error in looking at it because his knee touched the ground at about the one. And then uh, the touchdown was smashed over by Triplett. Triplett has now been our king is now in the ball game. Gifford is out. Webster is out. King is in for Webster. For New York. And it's first to ten to go for New York. The ball on the 40-yard line of the Giants as we start the final period here with the score 14 to 10. All backs in now. King at right half. The handoff here. No, Connolly takes, fakes twice, throws down the middle, and Stumper's open. He's got it, and he makes the catch. He's finally taken from behind on about the 15-yard line of uh, Baltimore by Andy Nelson. And Stumper, Bob Stumper of Bowling Green, lives in Marion, Ohio. But a uh, uh, forward pass that moved the ball 45 yards deep into Baltimore territory to the Baltimore 15. He caught 24 during the year for five touchdowns, 460 yards. Joe, I don't know who was supposed to cover a snout on that play, but he certainly outmaneuvered him. He was out there all alone. Again, all backs in. A tight T for New York. Again, Connolly back to throw. First attempt from the 15 throws. Hits. And it's good to Gifford, and Gifford goes in for the score. Gifford scores, and New York goes in front, 16 to 14. Finally, the veteran Charlie Connolly maneuvered the New York Giants 81 yards 
in four plays, hitting Frank Gifford for the touchdown. For the, for the touchdown. And now it's Summerall kicking the extra point. It's good. And the score becomes New York out in front here with uh, New York taking time out now. The score is New York Giants 17 and Baltimore Colts 14. Regis Toomey again for high grades. You know there's a difference in meats. Take a high grades West Virginia brand deluxe ham. It's different. Here's why. High grades takes the choicest whole hams and cures them by their own exclusive sweetenizing process. Then high grade trims the skin and excess fat and removes the shank bone. Each ham is then smoked over hickory fires until that smoked in goodness seeps through center deep. Boy, oh boy. So every slice is center cut in size, sweet, juicy, and tender. Never salty. And best of all, because there's no skin, no excess fat, no shank bone, you pay for only the eat of the ham. Try a high-grades West Virginia brand deluxe ham this weekend for the finest quality made by high-grade. High-grade also makes the famous Jordan ham, Virginia's finest. New York is prepared to kick off as the Chandler runs up, kicks. Lyles and Simpson are back for Baltimore. They drive Simpson back into the end zone, and he takes the ball. He puts one knee down and takes the automatic touchback, which will give Baltimore the ball first and ten on their own 20. And New York now is out in front 17 to 14 with brilliant play in uh, the third period and so far 55 seconds into the final period that has given New York uh, down the stretch drive that is for two touchdowns and the lead in the ball game. Now Baltimore sends Raymond Berry wide to the left. Frank Study Moore wide to the right. Johnny Unitas keeps Amici and Dupre back to run. First and ten for 20. Unitas throws to Moore. It's good. He makes the short look in catch and is down after a short gain on the play. To about, uh, well, it's not too short of Danny. Tries to pick up a first down about 11 yards as he twists and turns with uh, Emlyn Tunnell finally bringing him down on the New York secondary. He's been playing 11 years for New York, and he, like Unitas, cost New York nothing. He just walked into the Giants office one day and said, give me a look. And they did, he's been playing with him for 11 years. He graduated from Iowa. First and ten now on the 31-yard line of Baltimore as Unitas is back, throws again, and it's good to Barry. Barry trying to outmaneuver the New York Giant defender is wrestled to earth on the 44-yard line by Patton. Jimmy Patton, who was covering him on the play. Barry pivoted, hooked in front of Patton. Patton could not block the reception of the pass without fouling him. And then he wrestled him down to earth on the 44-yard line of Baltimore. Baltimore on the move now. It's another first down. And Baltimore now trailing 17 to 14 are striking. They've moved their own 20 and two forward pass plays with Johnny Unitas posting now the, for silence. The 70,000 fans just respond by raising the hubbub still higher. A few more decibels. And Ron Gibbs takes the official timeout to quiet things down. And give Baltimore a chance to hear their signal. Lenny Moore comes back from his wide flanker position to rejoin the huddle. And Baltimore now is on the Colts 44. First and 10 to go with New York leading by a score of 17 to 14 and just two minutes gone of the final period. Here we go, ready to go again. Four flanks wide to the right. Two men out there covering him. Livingston and throw for New York. United's back to throw again. Sets, looks, fakes, throws. It's incomplete. And to LG Dupre, he was getting a hard rush on the play from Frank Uso and from Musa Mozaleski, the two tackles in the New York line. Rosie Greer, who started, has a bruised knee and a bruised arm. And early in the ball game, Baltimore on, the, on their running plays were picking on that side, figuring that Greer, normally at his peak as a tremendous defensive tackle, was, would not be strong. And Jim Lee Howell countered by removing Rosie from the lineup and play, placing Frank Uso, a first-year man from Minnesota, at defensive right tackle. All right, it's second down coming up. Ten to go. The ball on the 44. Ball on United goes back to throw again. Runs and is hit and brought down by Uso. Frank Uso, of whom we were speaking as the play started. On the 45-yard line, holding him to a one-yard gain. Seventeen to fourteen, New York leads. New York's defensive pursuit now being tested as Baltimore, holding a fourteen to three lead at halftime. 
finds itself now trying to come back off the emotional ropes where New York's power drive in this third period and so far in the fourth have set them. Third down and nine to go on the 45. United's back to throw. It's incomplete. But let's see whether we get a throw. We've got a marker on the play. We're getting a marker on the play as the forward pass was aimed at Mutzler. And Mutzler was fouled on the play. And a pass interference. Defensive pass interference is called, which gives Baltimore a first down. Ten to go at the spot of the foul on the 38-yard line of New York. Baltimore moving steadily. A pair of completions. And a penalty now have moved the ball to the New York 38. And Mr. Unitas now is hit on 17 out of 24-23. Here's Unitas back to throw again. Throws a shorty. A little flat zone pass out to Amici. He's down back in the line of scrimmage for a loss. Actually, it was a lateral pass thrown with a forward pass motion. Holland Smare covering the right side of the New York Giant line to which uh, direction the pair of the play was aimed. Allowed Amici to make the catch, then floored him with a tackle at the 39-yard line. There's the yard loss on the play, and it's second and 11 to go now for Baltimore on the New York 39 with New York leading 17-14. to 14. We're in the final period. And Baltimore is to the attack once more. Letting Moore wide to the right. United's back to throw again. Sets, slopes, throws one long down the middle. Aimed to Dupre. Incomplete. It just bounced off his fingertips at the five-yard line. Let's pause ten seconds for station identification. WGY, WGFM, connect today. Baltimore is back now to uh, the 39-yard line of New York, where coming up, it'll be third down and 11 to go. And we're in the final period with 11 minutes, 10 seconds left to play in the ball game that will decide the National Football League's championship. Here is Unitas rolling out to the right, setting, looking, faking, throwing, incomplete, too much for to, uh, Lenny Moore on a look-in. Lenny Moore, coming in from his uh, flanking position, found Emlyn Tunnell, fighting him for the ball and batting it out of his hands. Emlyn Tunnell, the veteran from New York. Now we get the kicking team in. We're going to get a field goal try from the 46-yard line by the long-range expert for Baltimore, Bert Reshashire, with Shaw holding on the 46-yard line of New York. Fourth down and 11 to go. Here's the try for the field goal by Bert Reshashire. The kick, sailing high in the air. Ron Gibbs, the referee, says it's so good. And sweeping onto the field come the members of the New York Giants. Offensive platoon as the defensive platoon once more gets an ovation as it leaves the field for New York. With the Giants leading 17-14. to And New York goes over to the attack with the ball. New York's on the Giants' 20-yard line. New York has completed 11 out of 17 passes now. There have been four fumbles on the part of New York early in the ball game. Two by Baltimore. But these two teams have settled down now. And here's Connolly heading off to King at right halfback, swinging wide to his left. And the big speedster from Vanderbilt is brought down on the far side of the field by Marchetti with uh, Lipscomb. Joining in the chase and bringing him down after about a four-yard pickup to the 24-yard line on a wide sweep. Bill King is at right halfback. Triplett is at fullback. Gifford is at left halfback. Connolly at quarterback for New York. Rote at left end. Stelker at right end. No, McAfee's at left end now. Connolly now is a six for seven on forward passes in the second half. Second and six. Connolly's back to throw. Does throw. It's good to McAfee, and McAfee races upfield for a first down on the 38-yard line of New York with the tackle made by Ray Brown at right safety for Baltimore. Ken McAfee, who's putting in for Lyle or for Kyle Road at left end, made the catch for a first down, and now that's seven for eight for Charlie Connolly in this second half. The 38-year-old veteran, the venerable Mr. Connolly from Mississippi, has found his touch in the second half to this point. 
9.45 left to play in the ball game. New York leading 17 to 14. First down for New York. Hand off to Gifford. Stop with a marker down on the play and a loss on the play. Back to the 36-yard line. Ray Krause driving through. Brought him down just as he made the, the handoff was made by Connolly to uh, Gifford. Back of the line of scrimmage. Now let's see what the markers for offside against New York. John, the uh, Baltimore Colts refused the penalty. Ron Gibbs, the referee, giving signals to both sides of this jam-packed Yankee Stadium. That loss resulted in a three-yarder back to about the 36-yard line of New York, where it's second down and 13 to go for the Giants. McAfee flanks wide to the right. King flanks wide to the right, and McAfee to the left. Finally, back. Draw to Triplett. Triplett swinging wide to the left. Races across the 40, up to almost the 44-yard line before he's brought down on the play with uh, Milt Davis, right corner man for, for him, bringing him down. Gifford giving him a beautiful block on the play. On the draw play, Connolly dropping back, hands off to uh, the fullback triplet who waits for the handoff and then smashes. Normally he hits from tackle to tackle, but they're working the draw with triplet taking one step towards the middle of the line and sweeping wide to his left. And he moved that ball to the 44-yard line of uh, New York, where it's now third down and four to go. New York's ball. Head off here to Gifford. Sweep to the right. And Gifford cuts back, driving for the first down and makes the first down as he crosses the 50-yard line. He gets down to the 46-yard line of Baltimore before Carl Tassa brings him down with the assistance of Steve Byra in the Baltimore defensive unit. Kenny at left end, Krauss at left tackle. Left to make right tackle, Joyce at right end in the four-man line for Baltimore. Huntington back up the left side. Myra back up the right side. Shinnick in the middle. Here's a handoff on first and ten. With the ball going to Gifford, and Gifford slashes over the middle to... Uh, a gain of about three to four yards, and again, Ron Gibbs indicates by timeout. He wants to unpile things, get a good look at this ball. Ball spotted. He says start the clock again. Ray Krause made the tackle on Gifford at about the 42-yard line of Baltimore. A gain on the play of about uh, four yards. Make it second down, six to go. Coming up, New York's ball, and they're chewing out that clock. Seven minutes, 50 seconds to go. New York leads, 17 to 14. Connolly... Takes, hands off to King, sweeping wide. He fumbles as a, a Baltimore recovery. Oh, scramble for the ball and a Baltimore recovery, I believe. Looks like Lipscomb will come in and hit him, force the fumble. With, uh, with uh, Myra making the recovery of the ball for Baltimore on uh, New York's 41-yard line. So Baltimore takes advantage of a hard-hitting defense, a resultant fumble, and a break in New York territory with New York leading 17 to 14. It's Baltimore's ball, first and 10 to go on the Baltimore 42. A United's back on the New York 42. United's throwing a long one downfield in before. He's got it along the sideline, but whether he made it inside or out, no, he made it outside. At the three-yard line, a sensational catch, but just outside. And it goes as a useless pass, an incomplete one, if you will. And the ball is brought back to the 42-yard line of New York. Lyndon Crow was racing down the sideline, battling him for the ball. That's been a great individual battle all day between Livingston, the short man, who jars Lenny Moore and tries to slow him up, and Lyndon Crow, the deep man, who picks him up, two men working on him. Earlier in the game, uh, Moore picked up one for about 55 yards down that same sideline. This time he caught it, but it was out of bounds. Now it's second down, 10 to go on the 42-yard line of New York. Baltimore's ball with New York leading 17 to 14. Again, United calls for silence. Again, he gets the rousing response and yells. And then settles down, prepares to take, does, goes back, sets, runs, throws, and it's in it. Almost intercepted by Patton, but we uh, held on to the run, I don't know. Looked like Carl Limits or Patton. Carl Limits, the pass end to Raymond Berry, but he couldn't hold on to that ball. Carl Carl Limits, he's 21, Patton's 20, we saw a 20 flash through there. Carl Carl Limits batted it out of Raymond Berry's hands. Third down, 10 to go. Carl Limits 
played his college ball at Syracuse. He's a six-year veteran of the National Football League. Played most of the time with Detroit. Third down coming up, 10 to go. The ball is still on New York's 42 with New York being 17 to 14 and Baltimore's ball. 7-10 left to play in the ball game. Back goes Unitas. Unitas throws. It's good to Burr to Barry. Barry is driven out of bounds on the 31-yard line with a tackle made by Patton. Jimmy Patton in his fourth year of National Football League play, and it's good for a first down on the 31-yard line of New York. Baltimore's Lenny Moore, who's the flanker and a deep taker on the play, is back rejoining the huddle. 19 out of 28 completions for United. First down, 10. United's hands off to Dupre. Dupre running wide to his right is brought down at uh, about the 27-yard line of New York after a pickup on the play of about four yards. Tackled, uh, the tackle made by Livingston. A fine block made by Art Spinney of Baltimore. In the offensive line, he's uh, flanking Nutter at center, Sandusky at guard, Priest and Parker at tackles, Berry and Mutchler at ends. United's has Dupre, Amici and Moore in the back line with him. Second down now, and about six to go. The ball on the 27-yard line of New York. Baltimore's ball with New York leading 17 to 14. Baltimore. United's back. Robustelli drops him for a loss. Andy Robustelli on a bootleg play by United's. Robustelli made just an instant hesitation. Decided it was a bootleg. He couldn't see the ball. Then he tore for United's and floored him for a loss on the 38-yard line of New York. You can see the KG play of a veteran there in his eighth year of the National Football League. Andy Robustelli, a 230-pounder, he's 30 years old, made up his mind in a flash that this was the fake, that United had the ball. It was hidden from him. He just tore into United and dropped him. Now there's about 18 yards to go. Third down coming up for Baltimore on the 38-yard line. Here's Bow of New York. And here it's going for a loss again is United with the charge led by Ed Mozaleski this time. Dick Mozaleski and Jim Katkevich. Dick Mozaleski and Katkevich. This New York team is aflame defensively. They fired through on United and dropped him for another loss. And it's fourth down coming up now with 10, 20, about 27 to go. Reshashire is coming in for a long-range kick. The ball is on the 47-yard line of New York. Oh, it's going to be a punt. Brown is back. He's not going to try a field goal. Brown is back. Long punt formation. They have uh, five minutes, 45 seconds still to go in the ball game. Late arrival, racing in for play. Baltimore's all mixed up. Timeout called here by the referee, Ryan Gibbs, for the enforcement of uh, a penalty for delay of game against Baltimore because Baltimore was mixed up in its kicking team members and uh, they had a couple of strangers running around in the office. So there's timeout here with uh, Baltimore taking timeout. The score is New York Giants, 17, Baltimore Colts, 14. This is Regis Toomey. If I told you you could have a family meal for pennies, would you believe it? Well, you can with High Grade's KP Party Loaf, the most nourishing, most economical meat you can buy. High Grade's KP Party Loaf is made from pork and juicy beef. And believe me, that beef makes a world of difference. High Grade's KP Party Loaf. Cold, it makes a great sandwich. Try it or bake it for an easy, quick, and delicious main dish. That's kitchen cure. KP Party Loaf, tastiest of all luncheon meats. High Graze also makes many other canned meats, including chili con carne, corned beef, and High Graze or Kingham's canned hams. For the finest quality made, buy High Graze. For the finest quality made by High Graze. Joe Bowler with Joe McCogan at the Yankee Stadium in New York, where New York is leading 70 to 14. Baltimore has the ball. Fourth down and uh, 27 to go. They're kicking. Brown is back on his own 40. He kicks. Sails one down into the corner. 
Patton goes back for it, takes it, uh, catches it on the five, starts up field at the 10, the 15. Driven out of bounds across the field is Jimmy Patton, who was one of the two safety men with the uh, Emerald Sedona on the play. And New York has the ball with five and a half minutes to go now. The ball on the New York 20, 19 yard line. 38 yard kick and a 10 yard return. Here comes Mr. Rizzo Racing for the defensive team. Coming off the field for New York. New York's ball, first and ten to go on their own 19. Connolly at the helm. Connolly to Alex Webster. Webster cutting back. Smashes upfield to about the 24 yard line to be tackled by Big Daddy Gene Lipscomb. A 288 pound, 6 foot 6 inch right tackle for Baltimore. Never played college ball, came out of Miller High School in Detroit in service ball to make the grade of the National Football League. Did Lipscomb. There's a five yard pickup on the ball. The ball spotted at the New York 24 and it's second down and five to go for the Giants. With now five minutes left to play in the ball game. Webster is flanked wide to the right. Gifford and Gifford in the back line with Connolly, the quarterback, taking Connolly to Gifford. Gifford off the tackle is brought down with the Gio Marchetti and Art Donovan pile driving shoulder to shoulder under his legs and under the blockers to stop him at the line of scrimmage. There's no gain. Third and five coming up now for New York. Four and a half minutes to go. Bill, can uh, New York run out most of that clock? Well, uh, I know they hope they can. It's third and five, and this is a mighty big play for them right now because if they don't make the five yards on this one, they would have to give the ball back to Baltimore. Giants breaking out of the huddle, so let's see what Charlie Connolly calls on this one. And it's because of exactly that that Baltimore punted on that last try. They figured they'd get the ball at least once more. Here's Connolly back to throw now. Here's the throw. Good to Two, uh, Webster, and Webster, all he wants the first down is steps out of bounds at about the 33-yard line with Andy Nelson, shoulder-to-shoulder with him, covering for Baltimore. But he got the first down, and Phil, they've got four more downs to roll now with four minutes to go in the ball game. Joe, the thought just occurred to me that this is the closest the, uh, matched championship game in the last five years. No question about it. It is. And an amazing comeback for these high-flying New York uh, Giants. Here is Connolly now to Webster. Webster is hit at the line of scrimmage by the whole right side of the Baltimore line, led by Lipscomb and Joyce with Shinnick and uh, coming in on him too. Gain of about, oh, call it no gain. They maybe picked up a half yard. So it's second and nine and a half to go for a first down. Three and a half minutes to go in the ball game. That clock running, and New York taking all the time in the world, right up to the last minute, to uh, get up out of that huddle and over the ball. And off to Gifford. Gifford off the tackle. Smashes to about the 40-yard line with a tackle made by Carl Cossup in the secondary. And Ike Donovan from the side and Gino Marchetti from the side. As Costa hits it from in front, with the nose of the ball almost on what it is on the 40-yard line of New York. The gain on the play of about six yards, and it's third down coming up now. And make it about four to go for a first down. Just a shade under four to go for a first down for New York. Three minutes left, 250 left to go in the ball game. New York leading 17 to 14, the final period here at Yankee Stadium for the biggest of all prizes, the World Championship of Professional Football. Finally to Gifford. Gifford off the tackle, smashes to about the 43-yard line, and it's going to be close as Gifford hugs that football with a Marchetti making the tackle on him for Baltimore. Stelker giving him a good block on the way. So did Jack Stroud. Marchetti, who came in on two, is down on the field for Baltimore as timeout is taken for him and a measure. I'll take it for Gino Marchetti. Time in for Bill McColgan. Well, Marchetti has been chasing Charlie Connolly throughout much of the afternoon, but we see that Connolly goes over to see what is wrong with Gino as the Baltimore trainer comes out on the field. Two minutes and about 32 seconds. That's unofficial time, of course. The official time kept right on the playing field by the back judge. 
But the clock shows two minutes and some 32 seconds. And this is a mighty important measurement coming up right now. The trainers still working on Gino Marchetti. It was Marchetti who was on the, the bottom of the pile in stopping Frank Gifford on that play. Giants have the ball at about their own 42 and a half, 43 yard line. And most important to them right now is to pick up this first down and run the clock out. Gino Marchetti is going to be taken from the playing field. Time is still out. The Giants have been a Cinderella ball club all year long. They lost two of their first three and then came back to lose just one more the rest of the way during the regular season play. And that was an upset at the hands of the Pittsburgh Steelers. They went into the final game of the regular season, trailing the Cleveland Browns by one game. They beat the Browns 13-10 in that game. And then in the playoff game here a week ago today, they blanked the Browns 10 to nothing. Gino Marchetti, regarded by most pro football observers as the outstanding defensive man, defensive end in pro football, is being helped from the field, and he's going to be replaced at defensive left end by Ordell Bracey, D-R-A-A. S.E. He's from South Dakota, second-year man. He's 6'4", 215 pounds, 26 years old. Now, the Giants did not make the first down. They have the ball on their own 43-yard line. It's fourth down and about a yard to go. And we see that Don Chandler, the punter, has come into the football game. So the Colts will get the ball once more with two minutes and some 30 seconds left. And, Joe, it looks like this one's going right down to the wire. It's not only going down to the wire, but the Giants have tremendous confidence in their defensive platoon. They're not going to take a chance of making that fourth and one they're going to kick. Baltimore will have one more chance, at least with the ball, as you say, and there's a possibility that Baltimore might tie this up at 17-17, and we might see a sudden death, but that's only a might. Chandler back to kick. We've got uh, Retchishar back, and Dupre back, a toss-up back as the double safety man for Baltimore. Two veterans, two short catchers of the ball. There's the kick by Chandler. A high one coming downfield. Toss of signals for a fair catch. Makes it and grabs that ball on about the 15-yard line of Baltimore. And in troops, the defensive platoon for New York. In comes the offensive group for Baltimore. And that kick by Chandler was just a shade under his season-long average, 43 yards. He's averaged 44 yards to try all season long. Baltimore is 85 yards away from a touchdown. Two minutes and 20 seconds to go in uh, the ball game. The clock is running. This is unofficial time, as Bill has told you, because the official time of the National Football League is kept on the field by the back judge, Cleo Deal. And here is Baltimore now, first and ten on the post 15-yard line. United's back to throw. Sets, looks. Throws the long one downfield. Aimed to Mutchler. Incomplete. 35-yard line of New York with Emlyn Tunnell and Jim Catton riding, well, as they say in the Westerns, they were riding shotgun on them, side by side with Jim Mutzler, but the ball sailed over both their heads, as well as Mutzler's, and it becomes second and ten to go on the 15-yard line up Baltimore, the Colts ball, but the incomplete pass stopped the clock with an unofficial two minutes left to go. There is two, yeah. There's the official notification by referee Ron Gibbs of the rival coaches of the Just two minutes left to play in the ball game. New York leads 17 to 14. The Giants' redoubtable defensive platoon in there. The Greeks at Thermopylae had nothing on them. That goal line stand of theirs lit the fire that sent them on to two touchdowns and the leadership in the ball game at this stage of the contest in the second half. Here's United's back to throw. Does throw. It's good. To, is it or is it? Dupre had his back to us and it's called incomplete. Long gone Dupre, covered by Carl Carolivitz for New York. Turned his back on Carolivitz and us. Went to his knees and the question in our mind was, did he trap it? Did he catch it just on a low ball thrown at him at about knee high? But it was single incomplete. And for United's, he's now completed 19 out of 30. Charlie Connolly's been hot in the second half for New York, as we've told you earlier. New York leads 17 to 14. Third down coming up, 10 to go. Again, United is back. Sets, looks, throws out to the right. Good to his flanker man, uh, Moore, I believe. Lenny Moore on the far side of the field. Yes, he's tackled instantly as he makes the catch by Lyndon Crow at 
about the 25-yard line uh, or thereabouts. And it is a first down for Baltimore. That's all he was looking for. The first down on the hook pass. A first down on the 25 of Baltimore. United's back again. Sets throws. Missed. Aiming at it Berry. Covered by Carl Levitz. For New York. All right. The two play we see. Good flanked out to that side, the left side of the Baltimore offense. Stops the clock with a bit of 15 to go unofficially. New York leads 17 to 14. Baltimore here frantically trying to hit on a long one or hit Lenny Moore or one of their good open field men. That's why they've been aiming at uh, Dupre and at Moore to give them a chance to run for the counter. Here's Barry flanked wide to the left now. Dupre is back with uh, Amici and Moore is flanked wide to the right. It's second and ten from the 25 of Baltimore. Back goes United to throw. Says, throws. It's good to Barry. Barry in the middle of the giant secondary. Shakes one man off. Shakes another. Is finally caught up with at about the 50-yard line and down at the 50-yard line by Sam Huff. The middle linebacker in that Giants defensive platoon. A 25-yard gain has moved that ball to the 50-yard line where it's Baltimore's ball. First and ten, and Baltimore here takes time out. New York leads 17 to 14. We have a minute and five seconds remaining unofficially on the clock, and uh, we've got time for your observations, Bill. Well, Joe, you're quite familiar with uh, what a minute and five seconds means in the National Football League. You can do uh, plenty in that time, and right now I know what uh, John Unitas and Weed Eubank would like to do. If uh, not go all the way, they certainly would like to pick up another 10 or 20 yards and get in position for a field goal. And if that uh, did happen and they came through with a field goal for the first time in the history of the National Football League, we would witness a sudden death playoff. And in case you're not familiar with the ruling on such a thing, if this game at the end of regulation time was tied, then there would be a three-minute delay. There would be a toss of the coin and a new kickoff, and the first team to score would then be declared the winner. If they went through a first period without scoring, then there would be a brief intermission, and uh, they would go right back into play again. The ball is on the 50-yard line. Slightly better than a minute to play. The whistle blows. Time is back in as the Colts start to huddle. So here again is Joe Bolden. And here are the Colts to the line of scrimmage with Barry flanked wide to the left and Moore flanked wide to the right. You notice that quarterback has Amici and Dupre back as the potential running backs, but he's interested in the long strike. First and ten to go on the 50. He fakes, throws to uh, Perry. Perry shakes off one man. Carl Levis is tackled by another at the 35-yard line of New York. With the tackle made by Cliff Livingston coming back from his left side linebacking spot. And Perry moves out to the flanker again. Baltimore lines up quickly. And it's now first and ten to go on the 35-yard line of New York as... Baltimore tries to strike once more with 40 seconds left. United's back to throw, does throw. It's good to Barry. Barry shakes loose from one end of the 20 to 15. He's down on the 13-yard line. Ray Barry brought down here by Harlan Sparry. And here comes uh, the field goal team in for, uh, with 20 seconds to go, for Baltimore, I believe. We're getting a whole change in personnel. We may get that field goal with 15 seconds to go. The clock's running. Myra's going to kick from the 19, which would tie it up and send it into sudden death. There's the kick, and the kick by Myra is good, and the game is tied with seven seconds to go. 17-17, as Myra kicks one. From the 19-yard line, thereabouts, and we have seven seconds to go, and the clock is stopped, and the score is tied at 17-17. Baltimore started on their own 14. They passed to Mutchley, passed to Dupre. We're no good. Then he then United hit Moore for 25, missed to Dupre. Then he hit Berry for 25 to the 50-yard line. Hit Berry for 15 yards to the 35. Hit Berry again for 21 to the 14. And Myra kicked the field goal from the 20. Joe, uh, with just seconds to go, if the Giants don't run back this kickoff for a touchdown for the first time in history, we're going to say, and now going into the fifth period of a football game. That's right. We will. Let's see what happens on this kickoff, though, because there's still seven seconds to go, and I know it's a cliche, but you'll just see that anything can happen here. King and Maynard are back, the two Swifties. Retchishar will kick off. 
for Baltimore. Bill King, a first-year man from Vanderbilt, and Don Maynard from Texas Western, a first-year man, are both great sprinters, both speed burners, and they're back as the double safety men for New York. Let's see what Baltimore does here. They may be planning on a short kick, too, in order to keep it away from them and run this out. And then hope that the toss the coin will give them the ball on the sudden death. Oh, he kicks a long one downfield. Regishar sails one into the end zone. To Maynard. Maynard's out to the 5, the 10, the 15. He's out of bounds. Doing out of bounds is uh, Don Maynard at about the 18-yard line of uh, New York. With the tackle applied by Carl. John Carl of Baltimore. That stopped the clock with about three seconds to go. This is unofficial time, remember. These New York Giants were down 14-3 at halftime. Bounced back with a touchdown to make it 14-10 at the third quarter. Went ahead 17-14 in the final period. And Baltimore bounced back with an 84-yard drive to uh, tie it up on a 20-yard field goal. And here, Bracey and Krause, throwback Gifford, has the gun. Let's see. Well, that gun did sound. Yes, we've come to the end of regulation time, the end of the, the end of the game, and the score is tied at 17 to 17, and we're going to see the first application in history of the sudden death rule. We'll have three minutes of rest here before uh, the players comes back again. With timeout, the score is New York Giants 17 and Baltimore Colts 17. This is Regis Toomey. Say, New Year's Eve is just hours away. Having a party at your house? Well, high grade makes it possible for you to have a feast without the fuss. Here's how. Fix an appetizing platter from the more than 50 different kinds of high-grade sliced meats, the tastiest of all sliced meats, and they're packed in saran or vacuum wrap to keep them fresh till you're ready to serve them. For an extra treat, make a delicious chip beef spread or dip using high-grade's new smoked sliced beef. When you're shopping tomorrow, get plenty of high-grade's delicious sliced meats and the new high-grade smoked sliced beef. For the finest quality made by high grade. In some areas, the same fine high grade products are sold as Kingham's or Karsten's high grade. For the finest quality made by high grade. Never before in the history of the National Football League or professional football has there been an extra period and the Giants won the toss. And they're going to receive. The most historic moment in football history. The New York Giants won the toss. They elected to receive, and they will receive at the north end of Yankee Stadium for their sudden death playoff with all the marbles on the line. The members of each winning team will receive about $5,000. The members of the losing team will receive slightly less than $3,000. 17 to 17. Thanks to some brilliant passing by Johnny Unitas to get the ball into field goal kicking position. Joe? Bill, I just thought we'd call attention to the fact that it's the first team that scores, field goal safety touchdown, that uh, will win the game now, and the game will be over with the, with the first score. That's what the sudden death rule means, and the Giants, as you pointed out, are in favorable position because they have won the toss, have elected to receive, and will get the first opportunity with the ball. Here we go. We're almost set for the kickoff. Baltimore is ready to go. Bert Rechichar is teeing the ball up on the 40-yard line. This portion of the broadcast is brought to you by Philip Morris and Marlboros. And Rechichar has the ball teed up on the 40-yard line. Phil King down deep on the near side. John Maynard right under the goal post. Boy, listen to the buzz in the stands here at Yankee Stadium as Rechichar kicks off. 
Maynard takes it on the run on the 10, and he fumbles. He picks it up. He's at the 20, and he is down at the 20. Don Maynard tried to take it on the dead run at the 10-yard line, fumbled it, but picked it up at about the 18-yard line and got to the 20 before he was hit by Fred Thurston. It's 435 here in the East End. The lights in Yankee Stadium are in uh, valuable now, invaluable, because dusk is falling, and it's a wonderful picture here. Giants out of the huddle, to the line of scrimmage. First play in the extra period. Alex Webster flanked out to the right. McAfee at left end to split. Connerly calls the signals. He takes, he gives to Gifford. Gifford wide to the right, is at the 20, gets to about the 23-yard line. Piled up there by three or four of Baltimore Colts. Number 81, Ordell Bracey, who's in the ball game, in place of Gino Marchetti. The ball is spotted at the 24-yard line. So Gifford got four yards, and it's second down and six yards to go. The New York backfield, Connerly at quarterback. Frank Gifford at left half. Alex Webster at right half. And Phil King is the fullback. No, Triplett is in at fullback in place of King. Baltimore Colts, five men up there on the line of scrimmage. With the linebacker, Shinnick, just a yard behind. Flanker to the right, the left end split. Fake to Triplett. Connerly back to throw. He throws. It is no good. Intended for Bob Schnelker at the Giants' 45-yard line. The pass was just a bit off target. Carl Tassett was defending on the play. Ray Brown moving over there also. So Connerly intended for Bob Schnelker. His right end, incomplete. And it's third down and six yards to go. The first team to score in this football game is the winner. Ball on the Giants, 24. Third down and six yards to go. The Baltimore Colts talk things over defensively. They have Bracey and Joyce at the end. Donovan and Lipscomb the tackles. The linebackers, Spellington, Shinnick, and Sanford. Giants at the line of scrimmage. Flanker this time is Gifford, and he's out to the left. Right end, Schnelker, split by about three yards. Fake to Webster. Connerly rolls to the right. Starts to run with the ball. He gets to the 30-yard line, very close to it. Let's see if he made the first down. The tackle made by number 66, Don Shinnick, with Pellington, number 36, also helping out. Charlie Connerly rolling to his right. Fake to pass. Came up close to first down yardage, Joe. Connerly's getting up a little slowly, but he's, I think he's all right. Now we get an important decision. Are they going to kick or are they going to go for this? They're streaming in new man and Chandler is coming in. So, again, a tremendous vote of confidence in the New York defensive team. New York is going to punt. The ball is just about a foot short of the 30-yard line. Don Chandler in the game to do the punting. Chandler stands at his 15-yard line. Tass up a single safety for the Baltimore Colts. Back at the Colts 30. Chandler gets a tremendous kick away. Tass up being chased back to the 18-yard line. He takes it. He's to the 20 and slips and falls as he tries to cut. So the Giants took over on their 20, and now the Baltimore Colts do. 62-yard kick, a two-yard return for Tassif. As the kick went to the Baltimore 18-yard line, and Tassif got it back to the 20. First and 10 for the Baltimore Colts. Charlie Connerly in the second in the second half and this overtime period is connected on 8 out of 10. Lenny Moore, a flanker out to the right. Left end, various split. United gives to Dupre. Off tackle, Dupre still on his feet, comes across the 30 to about the 32-yard line. Frank Uso, who has played a tremendous game for the New York Giants in place of the injured Roosevelt Greer, was in on the tackle that time. But Dupre goes from the 20-yard line up to the 30-yard line, and there's got to be a measurement. John Unitas up there for the Colts to get a look at it. The chain is stretched out, and it's enough for the first down. The ball knows just over the 30-yard line in Baltimore Territory. The Colts are in possession. Their backfield, United at quarterback. Dupre at left half. Lenny Moore at right half. Alan the Horse Amici is at fullback. The ends are Ray Berry and Jim Mutchler. Berry is split at left end. Lenny Moore, the flanker out to the right. He's a couple of yards inside the far sideline. United's back to throw. Gets good protection. Throws a long, long one. And it's broken up by Lyndon Crow, intended for Lenny Moore, down inside the New York Giants 25-yard line. Lyndon Crow, veteran of four years in the National Football League, trailing Lenny Moore all the way as the speed boy did not maneuver at all, just set sail down the far sideline, turned on the speed, but he could not get away from Crow, and Crow broke it up. United's going for the distance on that one. 
The pass travels some 60 yards in the air. It is incomplete and it's second down and 10 yards to go. Baltimore Colts up to the line of scrimmage. Again, Moore is the flanker to the right and the left hand Ray Berry is split. Unitas back to throw. He hands to Dupre. Dupre comes in to the left side of the giant line and gets a couple of yards to the 32 of the 33 yard line. Jim Katkavich. Fine defensive left hand and Dick Mojelewski team up to make the tackle. Dupre the ball carrier. He got about three yards to the 33-yard line, where it'll be third down, about seven yards to go. New York Giants getting their defensive signal straightened out. The officials go over to the Baltimore bench across the way. There, there are some fans who have moved down along the sidelines, and time is called now while the officials clear the fans back. It's 17 to 17 in a sudden death overtime period here at Yankee Stadium in New York. Baltimore has the ball on its own 33-yard line. Third down and about seven yards to go. Giants won the toss to receive the opening kick of this overtime period. Maynard got back out to the 20, but the Giants uh, were stopped at the 29-yard line. And now the Colts have it on their own 33-yard line. The fans have been cleared back, and the Colts break out of the huddle. Third and seven. It's gone by in the overtime period. Ray Berry, split left end, flanker to the right. United the quarterback calls the signals. He's going back to throw. He throws the flare pass to Amici, the fullback. Amici's at the 40-yard line. Tackled as he gets to about the 41. He's going to be close to another first down. Colin Saveri made the tackle. United looked uh, deep downfield but could not find a deep receiver open. And Amici, the flaring fullback, as he moved out to the left, took it and carried for a gain up over the 40-yard line. It's an up for another first down. The ball spotted at the Baltimore 41-yard line. Unitas this afternoon has attempted 37 passes, and so far he has completed 24 of them. And the Colts have the ball on their own 41-yard line. First down and 10. Lenny Moore flanked out to the right, the left hand split. United gives to Dupre. Dupre swings wide, cuts back in, and gets to just about the 43 yard line. A big pile up over there, and again it's Jim Katkavich, number 75, leading the charge in there for the New York Giants, along with Sam Huff, their great middle uh, linebacker. The ball is spotted close to the 44 yard line. We'll call it the 44, a gain of three yards on the play. Second down and seven yards to go. Second down, seven yards to go in this pressure-packed football game, 17-7, to in a sudden death overtime period. Dupre is the flanker to the left this time, to the right, I should say, with the left end very split by a couple of yards. United's back to throw, gets protection. Now it breaks down, and he's dropped back in the Baltimore 35, 37-yard line. Nick Mojaleski crashing through from his left tackle position, along with Frank Yuso. To drop United for a loss. The ball is being spotted at the 36-yard line. Boy, these defensive lines have been tremendous all afternoon. Both the uh, teams, Pat Cabot, Robustelli, Mojalevsky, up for the Giants, Marchetti, Donovan, Lipscomb, and Shinnick for the Baltimore Colts. The ball back on the 37-yard line. Third down about 15. United calls the signals. He's going back to throw. This time he gets protection. Starts to run with the ball. Now he throws. It's good to bury. He's at the 45. Tries to battle away from a tackler. Carl Carroll Evans, but Carroll Evans holds him at the 43-yard line. Carl Carroll Evans, the defending back, lost his footing when uh, the end Ray Berry made his cut there at the 45-yard line. Carol Evitz fell down. Barry hauled the pass in and got down to the 44-yard line in New York Giant territory. 20-yard pass. And it's first and 10 for the Baltimore Colts on the New York Giant 44. Flanker out to the right, the left hand split. The fake to Dupre, the handoff to Leach. He's at the 30, the 25, down to the 20-yard line. 
So the Baltimore Colts have first down, 10 yards to go in the New York Giant 20. It was Jim Patton who saved the day for the Giants. Also in on the stop was Carol Evans. The fake to Dupre, the handoff to Alan Mohorsonici, and up the middle he went. Going 24 yards from the 44-yard line to the New York Giant 20. And it's first and 10 for the Colts. Lenny Moore. Blanked out to the right. The ends are tight this time. Hand off to Dupre. Cuts back in. Gets to just about the line of scrimmage. Maybe a yard. Sam Huff in there to make the tackle. Emlyn Janelle also helping out. The ball is right on the 20-yard line. Joe? This drive has only been good. They may carry to a touchdown, but in any case, they're within field goal range, and that first four is what, you know, what wins the ball game now. Here they go again. The Baltimore Colts, tied with the New York Giants, 17 to 17. In the sudden death, extra period, have the ball on the eight yard line. First down, goal to go. They will be held up now. A fan running out on the field with three of New York's finest trying to corner him. And they get him down at about the 22-yard line. <laughs> now there are four or five policemen escorting him off the playing field. Many of the fans are down surrounding the gridiron. Baltimore Cole started their huddle. The referee, Ron Gibbs, went back in there to say something to them. The Colts have marched from their own 20-yard line on the passing of Unitas who has hit on about 66% of his throws this afternoon. And some great clutch catching on the part of left-hand Ray Berry. Also another important play on this drive was an eight-yard pass, a player pass to Alan Amici. So here we go, with the ball on the eight-yard line. First down and goal to go. And a touchdown ends the ball game, remember. United calls the signal. He gives to Amici, and Amici piles into about the six-yard line. Hit by Sam Huff. Amici did move the ball right out and uh, straight in front of the goalpost, as well as gain about a yard to the seven-yard line. So it'll be second down and seven yards to go. Tremendous football game all the way. Baltimore. Held a 14-3 halftime lead. The Giants came back to go out in front 17-14. And then Myra of Baltimore kicked the field goal with just seconds remaining to tie it up and send it into the sudden death overtime. Baltimore at the line of scrimmage. Second down seven. United States quarterback calls. He throws. Oh, a clear pass out to the right. It's good. To Mutchler. Down to about the one-yard line. Jim Mutchler. Calling in a Johnny United throw. The ball is being spotted at about the two-yard line. United has been sensational here this afternoon. They're down about a yard and a half to go. He is now connected on 27 out of 40. The Colts at the line of scrimmage. Flanker to the right. The ends are tight. United takes. He gives to Amici, and the ball game is over. Alan Amici has scored the touchdown, and the Baltimore Colts are the professional football champions of the world. That's the end of the game. The final score. Baltimore 23, the New York Giants 17. We'll be back in a moment with the final wrap-up of today's game.